Hello and welcome to Circle Makers TV with lots of echo, which we're not supposed to have. Please tell us if you can hear us okay. Um, we've got a chat channel, which we normally uh, tell you about at the beginning of the show, so look into that uh, camera there. But um, what we'll do is we'll tell you a little bit about the chat channel, so if you want to chat to us, you can do so by scrolling down your live stream window, and there's a little white area, and you can tap in there your name and uh, start chatting to us. So if you want to tell us if the audio is coming through okay, and uh, I'll just be able to see that. Um, that would be very, very nice of you. So everybody says yes, all okay, and not distorted, hopefully. Tell me if we're clipping at all. Um, right, well, we've got uh, an interesting little show for you tonight. It's quite impromptu. Uh, my mic is too loud, is it? Right, hang on then, let me just turn everything down. How's about that? One, two, three, four, five. I've got 5 dB down now, so that should help. Um, so, any better? Um, okay, and if you want to go to the website, it's www.circlemakerstv.org. And uh, that will be, uh, there we are, so they say we're sounding okay now. Please let us know if, uh, if you get any more jip like that and we'll, uh, we'll try and sort it out for you. So, right, uh, it's a bit of an impromptu show tonight, uh, but we brought this one to you um, mainly really to do with the, uh, the circle maker himself, who said, I've been reading lots and lots of bollocks on the internet and I've been seeing loads of videos and it's, what a pile of pants basically what a load of shit and um so basically uh he said well you know i'd love to come on the show and sort of like sort it all out really and uh and tell people what's going on and i said yes please you know if you want to do that you're more than welcome so uh we have a circle maker sitting in the uh, the hot seat back there so let's see we've been fraught with technical difficulties today so i mean the fact that we actually got a little bit of music going at the beginning was was something if we can actually change cameras without it crashing now this will be uh, amazing so let's have a little look oh i've got to set this up set this up properly there we go um okay uh, la, 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 la. Uh, any second now really honestly here we go Five, four, three, two, one. The button is being pressed, and it hasn't crashed. So, hello, Circle Maker. Hello, Muffy. And uh, yes, don't use my real name. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard best behaviour to to not uh, cock up tonight and uh, get people's real names uh, spoken out. But uh, would you like to tell us what your uh, name for this evening and uh, general circle making anti alias is? <laughs> Tom will be just fine. Tom. Yeah. Okay, so Agent Tom. Agent Tom. Because we've had an Agent T, I believe, so we'd have to be Agent Tom. <laughs> okay. is, it, is it just Tom or anything? Tom will be fine. Just Tom. Yeah. Tom and the surname is will be fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mister. Mister. Okay, to me. Uh, okay, well, uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your background? Have you made many crop circles and? Uh, well, yeah, I've been involved in uh, a few over the over the years. Um, and I took a bit of a back seat for the last couple of years, but then uh, obviously last year we felt we ought to go out and uh, try something new, so uh, it was only the one I did last year, I was involved in last year, shall we say, um, but it was quite a prominent one. Uh, you can get the picture up there if you like. Right, okay, well, we, I think we know which one that is. Um, give me a second, though, because uh, I'm just playing with audio here because people are saying that it's, it's going a bit bananas and distorted, and uh, let's take that down a little bit. It's all very much uh, um, playing with a few mysterious settings here to get this working. So how is that now? Is that sounding a little bit less distorted? Uh, so they can tell us and uh, we'll, we'll see now. But yes, the, the, the graphic of the circle that you were involved in, it's coming. It's here it is. It was the ink pen serpent, mm -hmm. which uh, some people I believe called Westwood Haydown. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you were actually involved in uh, in making this. Uh, what was your role in in actually taking part then? Well, it was a, a collaboration design. Um, it was an idea that I had uh, to do a serpent, um, particularly a serpent, uh, purely because what a serpent represents is the uh, the shedding of skin of old beliefs in this case. And uh, what I was trying to do was try to bridge the gap between. You know the uh, the researchers that say it can't be done by humans, and uh, and um, 
and the actual humans that do it. So I thought, well, if we went out and actually made this on such a grand scale, as you can see, it's uh, very big, and it was deliberately done big, um, and uh, so we could film it and to show that actually human beings were, uh, you know, responsible for pretty, pretty good crop circles. Yeah, when you say it's big, um, how big is this circle? I mean, I'm I'm somebody who's an observer of it, as some people may be aware. We'll come back to that in a minute. But how how big uh, was it intended to be? Well, the actual measurement, I'm not sure of uh, right now, but the whole from nose to tail as it was, but it spans how many channel lines there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen tram lines. Yeah. Uh, the actual size, I guess it was from... Because it, it basically comprises of two circles. If you look at where the tail curls around and goes through that circle, if you continue that line, it would join up to where the centre circle is again. And the top bit going around would also do the same if you followed it all the way around. So, so it's basically, um, you know, two big circles that would have been probably the full length of the uh, tape measure. Right. So, uh, yes, I can see... However, however long that tape measure was. Right. Well, you, uh, you're you not quite sure of uh, details like that. Well, see, the thing is, is after making, you know, circles uh, year in, year out, I mean, I know that there's a lot of researchers and, um, and people uh, who investigate these things that are really, um, is anal the right word? But anal about, uh, you know, um, length and size and breadth and how many circles and things like that. But coming from the circle maker's point of view, because when you make so many, you kind of, Forget little details like the, the measurements and, and things like that, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, for us, it's only important at the time, should we say. It's the researchers that carry on the measurements and things, that, and they look into it and they analyse it, and uh, as we'll have a look through this uh, website in a minute at some of the observations that people have made, which seem a little bit eccentric, but uh, quite interesting, but wrong <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people people are going to obviously ask tonight. I think for uh, specifics, do you, do you think that you'll be able to uh, give everything that people are wanting tonight? Um, well, I can certainly try, but if they're looking for all the mathematical equations and things like that into it, then uh, no, I'm not one to actually keep uh, all the schematics written down and keep it forever. I'll just keep the design, you know, the overall picture of the design, and uh, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something that people will be asking: is uh, how could something like that be done? Uh, if you, if you go through the mechanics of it and how mm. it was all made, and they, uh, they're saying, uh, I've seen some channels talking you about. Them now to ask me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saying you know you'd obviously need a design in order to do this, but oh, um, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I mean, you had a design. Um, did you actually sort of keep a hold of the original design that was taken out into the field, or uh, no? That was lost in time. But I've got these. Other things here. What I what I actually wanted to show you is why I wanted you to bring it up on the oh, sorry, top and middle. Do you want me to bring up the uh, serpent again on screen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just wanted you to brush that up so we could actually see the finished article. But um, how it started off, a uh, very important part of the circle making, as I'm sure you know, is the actual planning. It sometimes takes a lot more planning than it does actually making it. You know, a lot more effort goes into it. And actually, that design started off well, a couple of years ago. Actually, um, well, I think maybe towards the end of 2009, beginning of 2010, when I started thinking about it. And it started off, if I can hold this up, something vastly different. I knew I wanted to do a serpent, but it started off. Can sorry, you? sorry, I'm just... Is that really loud? No, 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 it's nothing to do with you. I'm just laughing because somebody called Roger CCC has just said, Hello, hello all, who's this cunt? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, you know, just don't don't hold back, you know, just say what you yeah, feel. Say how you feel. Say what you feel. Don't be sure. Anyway, here we go. Um, back to the graphic. So yes. anyway, it started off like that, which you can quite clearly see the shape of the, the circle going on there. But actually, comprises of this circle in the middle here, with another circle that connected. That will all make one big circle. Then we're around the top. But I thought actually that looks quite rubbish. But you can see the basic. Um, foundations in there for what was I think on. it looks quite nice, but uh, I suppose it's it's more artistic interpretation on that and that type of design yeah, as opposed of course, to yeah. the and plus doing the scales. These are here would have taken an absolute eternity. Right, hold um, on in a second. I'll just zoom in to these scales that would have been. That would have been. Yes. So this was the je this was the idea that spawned the serpent that then became. So let's just have a yes, look, look yes, at the original. You can see that bottom circle down there was uh, that still made it into oh. the design. Yeah. But it just didn't have the impact that I wanted, really. Well, you can see where you were going with this, you know, sort of like 
spots and circles. So what what happened then to uh, to, to sort of change that? Um, you know, did did you have a hand in sort of saying let's make it different, or did somebody else convince you that it wasn't quite you know a brilliant design or well, whatever? Well, no, that, that first particular uh, draft there, I just looked at it, liked it to start off with, and then uh, decided that no, that wasn't the right one at all. So I moved on. <laughs> Um, in 2011, to actually thinking, right, how can we redo this serpent? So, if I'll show you this other one, right, you can see it's actually starting to take shape into the. Because that's really badly. We've got some. Yeah, if you if you Hello. hold it a bit forward. Is that better? Yeah, it's a little bit better. Yeah, it's just chroma keying it out, but we can see that now. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. So now you can see the basic elements are all to come. You know, you got the F shape. Yeah. And uh, a sort of yin and yang thing going on there, which I thought I might have uh, emphasised a little bit, but then. That didn't make it into the final draft either. And you can kind of see the head here. That looks a little bit rubbish as well, a bit like a, I don't know, a python or something like that. Yes, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I kept that and I started to feel a little bit more happy about it. So, again, I redrew it yeah. one more time. Ah, oh, yes, this. yes. You can see it taking shape now, can't you? It's getting that sort of thing. Yeah, let me just zoom in. We'll we'll do a little tour through the, uh, the, the, the graphic. So, you can see... The idea of having the small circles there, you know, yeah, it's the whole body. yeah, the little circles around, and you can see the outlining that idea that then came in. Oops, wrong way on the zoom. So you see the idea of using the outline effect around the circles, and uh, what about the head? Yeah, and the, the head. Still the head is still in a, in, a, in a different form, but that yeah. obviously came well, on. The tongue. I'll get the finger on to it. The tongue at the front there. Yeah, <laughs> I quite like that feature as well. Whereas at this point, I still wasn't quite, you know, fully happy with it. Mm. So I sent it off to a, a colleague of mine who uh, who had a look at it for himself. And yeah. uh, he sent me back the design that you see if you put the graphic back up of the... Um, sure. So what's, what's, on, what's on the back? You, you flipped it around very briefly. Is there anything on the back? Uh, nothing of any interest <laughs> <laughs> to this anyway. As okay. says, tuna, cheese and ham, if you want to know. Oh, I thought... I thought like, I'd shopping list maybe at the time. I thought there was another version of it on the back. <laughs> okay, there's not, is there? Right. <laughs> Okay. There's a sandwich menu, I think. Let's have a look at the so, graphic then. Yeah, yeah, go back to that. So there you go. That was what the, my colleague said back to me. He, he basically liked the S-shape design made up of all the circles and stuff. And uh, just developed the, the disc underneath that you can see there. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, stuck a different head on it, which I thought worked absolutely fantastic. So, uh, you know, sometimes circle makers collaborate. You know, if, they, if they've got a particular idea that's not working... You yeah. send it to somebody else for a fresh look at it, and then they can come up with that. So, uh, me and this other guy, we've um, you know we've done a few collaborations in the past. Right. So I just wanted his opinion on that, and I was really glad I asked him really because when he put that head on it, mm. and it, you know that bottom disc underneath, I thought that's the one, definitely the one. Yeah. So you just so, scroll down to some of these uh, sort of astronomical things that people have been yeah, putting this is in there. The, this is the stuff that goes on. I mean, I'm not I'm not criticising it. These people that probably. Um, that write these things so you know they're generally into it they're generally looking for the mystery and, and things like that and uh, but I, I sometimes think that we can disappear you know I throw in backside sometimes but if you scroll down even further there's one down there and I don't want to diss the guy at all I mean I don't know him personally when you say <coughs> scroll down you mean scroll down on this on, yeah on that on that page that you yeah I'll try and I'll try and scroll down now and uh, and see what's there yeah um, it, how far uh, do you, down do you want to go until I tell you basically oh you can mm. that, that, see that one on the left there? Yes, that's so quite nice. That. Mm. And then they've noticed, look at the um, the uh, thing on the right-hand side there. It looks remarkably similar, doesn't it? Let's have a little look at that. Yeah. That's the things I really like. You know, because it was never done with that intention, but then somebody's sort of come up with that. And you think, blimey, is it a coincidence, you know? Is this what the true magic of crop circles is, really? These sort of strange coincidences. Yes. You know, I mean, look at that. They very, very, except for the fact that they've obviously reversed the way that the serpent is round. Mm. Well, it looks like a dragon on the right. Do you think the uh, the yeah, the disc? it does look like a dragon. Yeah, mm. but it's still reptilian. You know, it's got the sun and the moon under there. So you, you can see where they're coming from with that. And that, you know, I've got a problem with at all. Yes. Um, <coughs> sorry, I keep coughing. There. Um, if Me keep, too, for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> if you keep scrolling down, it just gets a whole page of numbers. Right. So basically, if anybody wants to ask any yeah. questions of the Circle Maker tonight, um, please do in the chat channel. And uh, if you could put these in capital letters, then we'll know that they're questions for either myself or the uh, the Circle Maker. If, you, uh, if you're chatting in there, otherwise we probably won't pick it up. So uh, 
Have you found the graphic? Not it's, quite. Uh, it's towards the bottom. All right. Oh, here we go. This oh. stuff here. Blimmin' heck. That looks a bit complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, what the hell is this all about? What, the, the mathematical formulas? The mathematical equation. Yeah. Basically, this guy, I think he... Don't quote me as saying it, but he might be from um, a website called Godlike Productions, I think. Yeah, it's this guy. Godlike uh, Productions? I don't, yeah, I don't... Looking at that, I can't really understand what the hell it's about. I don't know, somebody out there hmm. who's watching this can um, interpret all of that. You know, so who the I'm talking to, but... The crop circles are created by God to introduce the E.T. Corn God's language slash game. Yeah. Circle C.I. is 109, 19, <sighs> the letter <laughs> S is in the crop circles letter S, 109 is J and I, J must be added to O, which makes O.J., <laughs> which is then O.J. dash 66 dash 66 equals E.T., this guy's a fucking yeah. lunatic. The, 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 the worrying thing is, is it makes sense in his head. <laughs> so I, I, I can't quite get it. But if you keep keep going down, because the overall message of what that circle according to this guy represents, go uh, to the bottom of those. Uh, those yeah, it's a little bit hard for me to scroll down because I'm having to lean over here. So I think the overall message. Oh, oh no, keep going. It's still going on. Look at it. It's just pages and stuff. Yeah, it looks. Oh, there you go. There's the web. It says Westwood Hay Down equals. E.T., E.T., found God, play ball. Now that what? apparently is the message that the, <laughs> that the circle makers uh, come all the way across the galaxy to put down there. E.T., E.T., found God, play ball. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Play bull. <laughs> play ball. Play, no, it's, I thought you said bo ball. Play no, ball. it's actually no, bull. Play, ball, it's play bull. Yeah. So that if makes even less there, fucking sense. <laughs> if anybody out there can actually make any sense of that whatsoever, please... I'm willing to be made to look, uh, you know, to look a prat if they can say it's really simple. But to me, that just seems so complicated, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, above all, the supper did represent the shedding of um, old beliefs, you know, the shedding of the skin. Yeah. Uh, but also, it's aesthetically pleasing. You know, it was it's that sort of shape. Yeah. That curve, S shape. And uh, uh, when we went out to, to make it, just to show that humans are very capable of doing these things... Um, we set out to make it very big as well, because this is one of the defining factors, you know. People stand inside a very large crop circle and scratch their heads and say, it's too big, we couldn't possibly do that. But it's actually, when you look at it, a relatively simple design. Uh, and if you want me to, I can uh, you know, quite happily walk you through how we actually done it. Sure. I do that when I'm walking out with a dog and, and there's like, you know, she does a like poo and I have to pick it up in a in a... A little plastic bag, and and I think there's absolutely no way she could have done that. <laughs> it's just infeasible. Practical. And then all these like geometric shapes enter my head, then and uh, and nu numerology, and I end up sort of like you know, yes, Cassie, Cassie, Et, you know, take poo poo bag. <laughs> Sorry, you know that's how it starts, and yes. So uh, right, we, have we got um, a que we've got a question here. Um, have you seen an orange UFO? Have I seen an orange UFO? Or balls of light, orange balls of light, anything like that? Have I ever seen a, um, no. You I've heard of other circle makers seeing those, so I'm not going to dismiss them. There's a few stories on the circuit. Yeah. Uh, but personally speaking, the only other time it's nearly happened to me, uh, I was out making the circles some way towards um, Potton direction. Potton? Uh, one of the fields out the back there. Uh, this was quite a few years ago now, and um, as I was going around, I just noticed this light wink on in the distance. And to me, it looked like it was coming straight at us. Uh, you know, it was all zigzaggy, wobbly. I said to my colleague, I said, uh, what do you think that is? And he said, um, oh, I don't know, I'll, I'll ask him again in a minute. And I could see that he's, he was trying to work it out for himself and was wondering whether we should be afraid of this thing or not. Mm. And uh, by all intents and purposes, you know, uh, we both believed it was coming straight at us. It looked quite eerie, and we started getting that fight or flight. And uh, I'm afraid to say we opted for flight at the time. Uh, so we decided to pack up all the stuff. And then we took one last look at it, and all of a sudden it just clicked into place what it actually was. I mean, this was 2 o'clock in the morning, but it was a bonfire <laughs> oh, up right. on the hill in the background. Ah. As simple as that. And because maybe we were tired, fatigued, and sometimes your uh, eyes play tricks on you, don't they, in the, in the dark, and your brain sort of fills in the details, uh, I guess we thought it was actually moving, but it wasn't. It was just the, the flames, you know, flickering and dancing. They gave it the impression that it was moving, but it was uh, it was just a fire. Mm. So, uh, yeah, we didn't run away in the end, otherwise that would have been very embarrassing. But, but yeah, I know other people that have 
It actually was the light, and they've had um, some very freak experiences. I understand that you've had uh, similar experiences yourself, haven't you? I think. Oh, quite a lot, yes. Yeah. Yes. No, stop using my real name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, I've had some strange experiences. In, uh, yeah, quite a lot. It's made me a believer in uh, there being strange things connected to crop circles that are made by people. Mm. But uh, that's the hardest part to kind of, you know, talk to people about really mm. is the fact that people are making these things and strange paranormal things then get attracted into that sort of, you know, man-made thing. That's what people can't get their heads around. Yeah. Um, Right, let me just have a look. We've got a, a question here. Let me just go over to my screen. Um, all that work just to mock people, is it? No, I didn't say the word mock. Whoever said that. <laughs> that, was, that? That was absolutely not the intention at all. This is the fake Roger CCC has just asked this. Oh, We've right. got a real Roger W in channel, and then his alter ego that we don't know is, is kind of like you know, it's Roger CCC. Um, and, yeah, so all that work just to mock people. Um, I don't remember saying anywhere in there that it wasn't to do with mock people. It was, I told you at the very beginning that it was actually just to demonstrate uh, the capability of humans and the wonderful creativeness that we've, uh, we all possess. So was this um, done specifically then, you know, with the purpose? I, I know the answer to this, but I'm asking the question to get the, get the response. But was this done as a sort of a demonstration then that would be revealed later on? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. That was, that was one of the things. Um, like I said, the design of a serpent was done uh, deliberately uh, to give the overall message of shedding, you know, old beliefs. Uh, but also, yes, it was uh, to be filmed so we could actually show people making it. Because for years... You know, uh, prominent researchers have been saying, well, if they're man-made, uh, where's the video proof? Where's the evidence and stuff? So we thought, well, actually, I mean, there's a few other videos out there on the circuit of um, circle makers actually in action, but that doesn't seem to, um, you know, quench their thirst for it. So uh, we decided to make a very big one, a very noticeable crop circle, one that, uh, you know, hopefully will uh, get the respect it deserved, which I think it did. Uh, unfortunately, the farmer... Um, that wasn't our intention either, to upset the farmer, but uh, obviously he took uh, umbrage at it. And the very next day he mowed it out, so um, I was just very relieved that at least there was one aerial shot, or several, wasn't it? There was at least one flight that flew over it to take pictures anyway. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, it's a bit sad that the uh, the farmer took that position on it, but... Um... Well, I can see, I can understand that sort of point of view as well, actually, because it's... I mean, it's the farmer's land, and he doesn't want people traipsing in there, and it can, you know, ruin the crop and stuff. But unfortunately, it's the nature of the, the craft as well. Um, you know, his very nature is a, an illegal activity. But then, how else could you do it? <laughs> there will be no crop circles if uh, you know if we didn't actually upset a few farmers from time to time. Mm. Uh, so, are you going to go back to that field again, or do you think? No, uh... of course not. No, the farmers made it very, very clear that he wasn't happy, and uh, I'll never. You know, do something deliberately to upset him. Now I know that he's, he's not, you know, okay with it. I, I wouldn't do that. Okay, there's um, another question up here. Uh, did you get any pictures of it after it was cut? Even in October, even in October, it looked great. I have seen pictures. Yes, um, that's from Davy D, by the way. Pardon? Davy D. Davy D. Yes. Yes, I have seen pictures because the farmer actually he kind of stayed true to the design as he mowed it out. He started off in the bottom uh, circle down there. And uh, I mowed all the way through the middle, you know, the main body, and then up to the head, and then took one of the circles out. But yeah, you can definitely still see the shape there. Um, I did actually fly over it um, not long after it was cut out, and I could still see it there. Uh, it was sad to see. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> but apparently, the farmer um, was actually saying things like. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, somebody's just sent me a text message. Um, can do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay then. It's against my, uh, it's kind of against my religion, so to speak, to uh, to kind of knock people off the channel, if at all possible. But uh, seeing as you uh, are so emphatic about it, then uh, it shall be done. It shall be done. And so, well, I know what's happened to them, uh, oh, somebody, somebody is not happy about um, somebody using somebody else's name. So, uh, yeah. Um, by the way, Wraithy was the guy who said, um, have you seen an orange UFO? So that was from Wraithy. So I'll try and oh, remember right. to mention people's names so that you know who they're coming from. Uh, right then. Wraithy says, oh, there we are. So you see, he comes straight back in. So now we mention his name. He says, what colour was the light? So I think he's referring to your uh, your 
seeing the bonfire, but I mean, well, it was it's fire, a bonfire, so it was, it was pretty orange. <laughs> mm. And that's what I'm saying, you know, it, it became very clear um, at the end there that it was definitely a, a fire. Uh, although why it suddenly seemed to ignite at two o'clock in the morning, I had absolutely no idea it was gone, but it was right up in the background in the hill. Right. Um, yeah. And on that note, actually when we was making that serpent, I had a bit of a, a, a weird moment as well. That turned out not to be a weird moment. Um, I was looking at a bright light in the sky that seems to be sort of zipping along, and at first I thought, oh, that's the, the space station. I don't know if you've ever seen a space station go across, but it's pretty bright, like um, Venus. And it goes, yes. you know, straight across the uh, uh, the top of the sky there. I was looking at the thing thinking, oh, that could be the space station. And I, I called a colleague over, I said, have a look, look, there's a space station up there. And he said, uh, no, it's not, that's Jupiter. I said, what do you mean it's Jupiter? He said, it's not moving. And of course, when I look back at it, it wasn't moving at all. It was just my sense, again, the same thing with the fire. You know, my imagination made it move. Or maybe the clouds gliding along the sky made it move, but it, it, it really wasn't. So, uh, yeah, that's twice that's happened to me now, so as of yet. No supernatural balls of light. Right. Well, I think there's a term for that, actually, uh, which is when the eyes are looking at something in the sky and they can't lock on and they seem to sort of vibrate around and you think that stars are in one position and uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but somebody who's in the channel probably will come back to us with uh, with what it is. But I've, I've done this myself. I've been convinced that I'm looking at something that's dancing around the sky like a UFO and it's zigzagging. And to the point where it's driven me so mad that I'm thinking, you know, it, it is moving. It is moving, definitely, isn't it? And I've got a video camera. I pointed it up at that area and then uh, looked through the lens of the video camera and it's standing perfectly still. And then I look up there and it's dancing around and I look through the video camera and it's standing still. So it is it is your eyes. Your mm. eyes play tricks with you in the dark. And uh, once you've got a bit of reference light, like the light from the viewfinder was a reference light, you can see it all stops then, it stands still. Mm. But when you're in pitch black, you know, the objects can dance around and confuse you. Which so, makes you think about uh, quite a few of the... Um Incidences of that that people put on the net, you know. Yeah, indeed. It may all be supernatural things or just that, you know, how you just described it then. Even to the point, I suppose, where you could say, well, some people have said these things are hyper leaped, you know, they've sort of whoosh, they've gone off. Mm. And that's become folklore then that um, these objects do this. Uh, albeit if it was done in the daylight, if you saw something like that in the daylight, it's a completely different matter. But if you see something at night and it zips off, I mean, in an excited state, you may think that it's it's something, uh, you know, of an alien nature. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, you know, people have gone on to make video footage which uh, fakes that sort of effect. Huh. So, the you know... Castle. Is that the one you're talking about? Well, or you know, Oliver's Castle is, is one example, yeah. There, there's the Gulf Breeze stuff where they've had, uh, and Jerusalem UFOs as well recently, mm. uh, where they've shown stuff sort of zooming off into the into the distance at high speeds. But, um, okay, what I'd like to sort of, you know, check with you is uh, what was the sort of, um, what was the type of activity on that night then? You've, you've obviously uh, set out to go to a field and make this design, and... Um, what uh, what was the sort of team plan then? Can you kind of walk us through from the beginning of the night to the end of the night so that people understand what has gone on here? Right, well, okay then. Um, well, the story of that circle actually started a good week before then, really, uh, because we originally intended to do it the Saturday before. Uh, mm. And we, we went to the place, and um, every time we tried to work out what, where we were going to park, where we were going to walk into the field and stuff like that. There were, there were lots of cars going past at that time. And it was a very popular sort of site up there. There's a car park on the top, so, um, you know, uh, people of the night that like to go up there at night time, there seemed to be a lot of that. <laughs> and um, so every time we, we parked the cars, there'd be a few cars that would drive up there and sort of check us out, so we waited around. And was, was it was um, uh, the, the farmer, even, I heard? Was it, it, that it correct? could have well have been, yeah. They, they definitely seemed like uh, they were curious about us. So uh, it was probably the farmer or somebody related to the farmer or something. And uh, to the point where actually we found a, a, a gap where we could quickly get into the field. We, we decided to take one car down to the field and drop off all the equipment and one person and um, to stand with the stuff. And then we go and park the cars and we all join them down there. So uh, we did that. And uh, I helped this person move the equipment into the, the hedge out of sight. And I was sitting there and I saw another car come down the road. And of course, I thought that was one of our colleagues coming down to 
had dropped off some people, so I stepped out into the road, and it turned out to be the same farmer or the same landowner, and we sort of like looked at each other for a minute there, and I thought, oh bugger, <laughs> I think we've been rumbled. Uh, so it was yeah. agreed then that we jumped back up into the car, went onto the um, top of the hill again to regroup, and I told everybody what had just happened, and I just thought, you know, tonight is not the night this is supposed to happen. You know, it was too late now. We were a little bit flustered, we'd been caught every time, and it was just like the universe was saying that now's not the time. So uh, we postponed it, and uh, of course we had to have a bit of a team change then, next time it came round, because a few people in the original uh, the time we was going out couldn't make it that night. Um, so, yeah, there was a few uh, new people involved, shall we say. And um, including one mother and her son and girlfriend, I think it was, actually. Um, yeah, they, they came out and it was their first time. And they were very keen and eager to, uh, you know, to come out and uh, fight with us. So we, on the second occasion, they got that opportunity. Uh, so on the, the second time we went out there, we'd done a whole repeat of what we'd originally done. And there was a few cars knocking about, but nothing too uh, major. You know, we could easily get around them. Um, so... We then dropped off all the equipment like we did the first time. Uh, we, we left a couple of people in the in the hedge there to guard the equipment. And then uh, everybody else went off and parked their cars somewhere away. And uh, then one car drove back again with everybody in it, dropped us all in, uh, and then went up to the hill. Uh, so while we were all in the field there, uh, we then walked along, found uh, a good way into the field, selected the tram line, which, uh, which we just do just by the feel of it. And uh, we got into the, the tram line, walked all the way into a point in the field that felt right, um, and then started from there. Of course, the, the was you just about to say something, Matt? No, no, no. Oh, sorry, okay. you raised the mic. <laughs> no, no. I was, I was like, you know, getting ready for <laughs> future okay. future saying of things. So uh, once we're all in position, we're happy that this is the place to do it, um, because uh, usually when you, you're going to start a crop circle, it's very important to get the right feel of the place. You know. If it feels right to do it, then you know it's it's time to do it. Uh, we've all been to places where it feels utterly wrong, um, that you shouldn't be there, that you're not welcome. So, uh, you know, thankfully this night wasn't one of those nights. So we spun out the, um, the first circle, right in the centre of the, uh, the serpent. Do you want to get it back up on the screen there so I can actually... Let's have a look. See if we can find it. I suppose the only way I can yeah. sort of point at it is there. Uh, is this any good? We've got a close-up here of... Um, yeah, we'll come back to this bit in a minute. If you can just get an overall... Um, aerial shot again of it. Okay. Uh, is that good enough, that one? No. No. Go to the, the, the actual aerial. That's a nice one. That's that that's nice basically one. where I was set up with the camera, which we'll come to in a minute, because uh, talk yeah. about that. There you go. So there we go. So if you look in the very centre circle of the whole design there, right. that's obviously the first circle that we, we spun out. And yeah. uh, once we put that circle down, we put all our equipment in there, uh, we then did an invocation, which I don't know if you've talked about on the, the show before yes it's basically yes yeah. we've talked about invocations but well, would you like to would you like to tell us what you would have done on that night do you remember yeah yeah that's okay pretty much what i do on on every night that we go out uh we spin the first circle and we all stand around the center we all hold hands and uh it's that old uh, cliche of looking up to the sky and it just feels nice to do, look at the stars as you're doing it um but it's just basically asking the universe or the great spirit or you know, i suppose you could um so it was God, if you look at the, the whole uh, picture of things, you know. Mm. Whatever mm. it is that you're asking, you're asking everything, you know, in yeah. the universe. Yeah. Uh, just for protection and um, you know, for the nice things to happen, for everybody to have a very positive experience, uh, that it will be very well received and that people will get the, the positive message that it, it, it's meant to be. Um, yeah, and so we'd say a few personal things, you know, um, wishes to people that couldn't be there and uh, people that have moved on or whatever. And uh, yeah, right at the end of it, we'll know it's time to go. And then you just pull straight into the work then. That's when the, that's when the tough bit starts, after you've done your invocation. Um, okay, so how so many of the... Oh, sorry. Well gone. Uh, how many of the... Were you there? Um, how many of you were there? There we are. I get my words in the right order now. Yeah, well, they're actually making the circle. Yeah, it was a bit like Yoda, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, of being there, how many of you there were you? <laughs> Well, of the being there. <laughs> yeah. Davey D. <clears throat> my voice is going. I don't know why you're coughing. I'm coughing. My voice is starting to go. Davey D. says, I love the invocation. Yes, so there that's we go. the most important part. So. I always think, uh, for me personally, I know uh, not all circle makers are into it, and uh, 
everybody's got their own you know, ideas and motivations and, and things like that. But uh, I know a few circle makers there is that spiritual aspect of the whole thing. Mm. And uh, for me, that is very important because uh, you know you're in sacred land, really. It's Wiltshire. You know, it's a very sacred place. Uh, a lot of things have happened here. I mean, people forget the circles aren't uh, a modern phenomenon. When I say circles, I don't mean crop circles. Uh, circles in general, you've got Stonehenge and Avery Stone Circle, and there's the Henge down at, um, not too far from Woodborough, that's not got any stones on it. Do you know that place? Um, Mar Marden, I think it is. Marden, and there's actually a big Henge that goes right around in a massive circle. You can see the ditch all the way around there. And it used to have stones on there uh, back in the day. They've all been removed. Oh, you right. I don't know. Maybe we can look it up if you want to bring a second screen up or something with Control T. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's try that in. And see what it comes up with. Yeah, we'll see if we can find that. So, um, <laughs> but again, you know, another example of uh, a circle. So circles have been in Wiltshire for, you know, thousands and thousands of years, and uh, I, I guess I don't know who coined the original phrase, but it, is, it seems very apt. Is the whole uh, temporary temple thing that crop circles have become, aren't they? A temporary temple. People go inside them and they meditate and they do energy work and they have. Uh, you know, spiritual experiences inside there, and I think uh, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, so like yeah, for me, the invocation and the whole spiritual aspect is uh, the most important thing. You know, I'll only do a crop circle uh, design uh, that means something along those lines, you know, spiritual in nature. Yes. Yeah. I, I like to think that I was using the term temporary temple um, long before I started hearing Steve and Karen. Uh, you know. Harping on about it, but oh, there you go. I know they used it for a website and stuff, but I didn't know yeah. where it originated from. But uh, whoever coined it, it's a good, good yeah, phrase. Probably <laughs> find it wasn't me, but I, I seem to remember using it a lot. But uh, yeah. oh, in answer to your original question, it was eight. Eight people. Eight team members. Yeah. How many people were there <laughs> <laughs> in a Yoda voice or not really good <laughs> Yoda voice? Um, yes. So uh, eight people and yeah. uh, one myself. Uh, on the hill, who didn't actually take part, uh, but was observing. Yes. So, um, yeah, you, you basically got yourself set up, and uh, you, yeah. you want to tell us uh, how it went on from there? Do you want to sort of walk us through? Uh... Yeah, sure. I need that aerial photograph back up there again. Okay, if we bring the... Uh, oh, hang on, is that the, um, is that the Henge? This is Marden Henge, then, there is it? Look at it? Let's have a little look at this. It's clearly like a uh, Avebury sort of deal going on there, but there's no stones, but you can see the ditch all the way around. Oh, yes. Well, clearly a circle shape going on. Okay. That's... And uh, very easy to miss. I mean, you drive past it, you know, quite a lot, and it's not until it was pointed out to me uh, by a good friend who said, have you ever noticed the ditch around there? And, and there it is. So there was another prominent, uh, you know, stone circle in the area. Because, of course, Marden is uh, not too far from Walton Barnes, Stance and Bernard, all around that area. Yes. Uh, very close to Woodborough, actually. Oh, right. Yeah, I did, didn't... Marden Patney... And that sort of area, That's isn't it? it? Yep. Marden and Patney. I never knew there was anything like that well, down there. I didn't there. even until recently. But, uh, I'll have to go. fly over that and have a look. Mm. Yeah, fascinating. Okay, so um, right yeah. then, you were you were basically in the... Yeah, get the aerial. Uh, we'll get the aerial back, back up yeah. then. So, yeah. Excuse me, I just need to cough again. <coughs> oh dear, I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Dog ears. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, so we spun out that central circle, the, you know, the, the, the very middle there. Right. And of course, the next job uh, then is to uh, to mark out the actual design before we start flattening it down. So you can quite clearly see the S shape going on there with the with the serpent. And uh, in the middle, if you picture that the S, the lower curve of the S and the upper curve of the S, if you visualise them as two complete circles instead of the S shape that it is, can you understand what I mean there? Yeah. Well, the centre point to get those two complete circles would be the other two discs that are um, coming away from the central one. You see the ones on the The dumbbell. There? Yeah, like the dumbbell. Yes. Yeah. So you'd stand in the top of the dumbbell or the lower part of the dumbbell. That's your centre point. That's the centre for the, getting the arcs for the two S's there, basically. Yes. And uh, to get those, um, what we thought we'd do is... Uh, because one of the uh, main things, again, uh, to prove um, the human involvement uh, side of things, was we wanted to uh, get rid of the telltale construction lines this time. And if you notice, running through the middle of that serpent, there is no construction line there. Right. Uh, i.e. the line that would, um, where you'd put all the circles around. Do you understand what I mean by yes. the construction line? People know what I mean by that. Yes. Yeah, usually with a, a, a quite a few crop circles, if you look, you can see 
the construction line running right through the middle of the discs. So you'd be line. saying that you expect to see something coming yeah. around you, like where my pointer exactly. is now. But you'll you'll actually this see one, there isn't. There isn't, yes. Yeah, the crop in between the, each disc isn't, isn't broken. Right. And that was done very deliberately as well. Um, so just where you've got the, uh, the, the, the mouse there, if you see there's an view running up the page to the other disc. Yes. Yeah, so we had to step over a bit of crop so we didn't damage, you know, the edge of that disc. So you stepped over that bit there, is it? Yeah, and you stepped into there, and then this is where we've cheated and uh, used a surveyor's laser to get the straight line. I was just about to ask you, if you were sort of working your way out, were you holding tape to get that straight line, or uh, no, you used a laser? The, yeah. It's the old faithful um, surveyor's laser uh, to get straight lines. Yeah. It's basically the person in the middle of the, uh, the central disc there uh, divides the circle, uh, 180 degrees, you know, to get the two points on either side of the circle. Right. And then you shine the laser up there, and uh, the person who's going to mark out the straight line, as indicated there, would fire the red dot onto their hand, and uh, basically walk backwards. And as long as that red dot stays in your hand, and your hand is in a fixed position, or like on your hip, or on your, you know, on your waist somewhere, uh, you just generally walk backwards until the uh, tape measure pulls tight at the pre. Uh, um, uh, at the uh, desired length, shall we say, of the tape measure. Yeah. When that ball's tight, that's where you stop. And then somebody follows you up there with a stomper board up the line that you've just made and flattens it out to make a nice clear avenue, which you can operate from without disrupting any more crop then. Do you, do you know if it was one board width wide, that... Um, that? Yeah, we've got different widths of boards. You right. Know, we've got very big ones, we've got quite small ones as well. Right. So that's only, I'd say, I uh, guess, I think it was a four foot ball on that one. Right, okay. So it's about four foot wide to go up there. Um, maybe, you know, a couple of feet over that, but yep. you know, like I said, we've got a different size, so it would have been relatively small one. Okay, so if somebody wanted to check that, they could see that it was consistent, that uh, board yeah, size board was being used, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've got to this point up here. Yeah, you spin out that circle there where your uh, mouse is. Take a radius and then somebody spins yeah. it out. Um, and now you've got the central point there for the top arc. So you could stand here, come back into the middle, and yeah. then start to... Now, this is the thing. Because we didn't have a construction line there, this process actually took three different people. Right. And it is, you've got one person stood in that disc where you've got the mouse right now. So you've got somebody standing there. Somebody's holding the tape measure that is the exact um, circumference of the arch. Yes. Or the diameter, shall I say. So from there to there. Yeah, they've got that distance. Yep. And then somebody else in that crop circle, that bottom circle there, is stood there with the other another tape measure. Right. Which is the um, diameter of each circle. Right. So from the middle to the edge of that circle. Right. Yeah. So from the middle to the edge. Well, that's the, the edge, radius. Yeah. So somebody's isn't got it? a tape measure with that distance on there. Yeah, there. so that's the radius from yeah. there to there. Yeah. The radius, yes. So then um, basically. Um, one person steps over the crop, just uh, yeah, an average step in there, as long as it's the same person doing it every time, yeah. we'll get roughly the same gap. So he steps in, yeah. So he steps and, over this bit. Yeah, and stands there at the edge, at the edge where you want the circle to start. Yes. Okay? Now the other person walks into the centre. Still holding the tape that they were holding there. Yeah. And they and walk. they're holding the longer tape that goes into the first Yeah, circle. so they're holding that tape, and now they yeah. instead of being there, they've moved across, and they've exactly. jumped over there, and now they've walked one's into there. The, the other one's waiting on the edge. When the tape, two tape measures pull tight, they're in the centre, ready to mark out that circle. So right. then the person who's been waiting there at the edge... Waiting at the edge, yeah. ...then scribes out that circle, just goes around that circle. So he's got a different radius there from that one's the biggest, isn't it? So yeah, it's slightly all, um, smaller... Yeah, these are all predetermined uh, measurements. Right. So he knows what the next circle is. It's, all, it's always going down in size. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, and then the process is repeated in each one. As long as the person is up in that central disc, the one up the avenue... He stays there. As long as he stays there holding that tape measure the whole time, mm. the other person who's stepping over into the other circles is on the, the right arc. Is always at the, the right distance all the way around. Yes. But you don't leave a construction. It's more time-consuming. But more effective. Okay, so would you have filled this in straight away when you did this line up here? Would you oh, yeah. Do, you yeah. filled so that in straight away. So you thing. can work in it, yeah. yeah. And then the moment you've finished doing this circle and you've, you've stepped over and started scribing this one out, you've got people ready flattening this, is it? That's right, yeah. There's yeah. The, the rest of the team then, uh, as soon as each circle, it's like a military operation, man. Yeah. As soon as each circle is uh, scribed out, the next part of the uh, team move in, flatten down. Right. And away you go, all the way around until you get to the point, you know, the smaller circles at the end there. 
Mm. Which weren't, this is the other thing as well, you know, they weren't... So uh, you've done all of these all the way around you. Do you remember which way? Because, I mean, I'm... I'm we started with the head end first, actually. You started with you the head end. Down there, yeah, I can't even down. remember from... Because I filmed it, and I can't even remember what from the video now, which way you started. But it, it, it started down to the way, bottom, yeah, did it? Yeah. Uh, which would have been closer towards me, which is the head end, was the bottom. I remember that bit. Yeah. And then, then you come up and you start at the top and work your way around to the top. Are you pretty sure of that, yeah? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not, so there we are, but that's fine. Okay, uh, we've got a question here from somebody. Uh, Braithy has asked, um, so where do you see the art movement going? And what is the ultimate motive of the majority of the artists? Where do I see the art? Where do you? Yeah, the sorry. Art, art, art. Where do I see it going? Where do you see the art movement going? Well, and, and see, what is, is the, the ultimate motive of the majority of the artists? Oh, well, I can't speak for the majority of the artists. You see, the thing is with uh, circle makers is there's a lot of them, <laughs> and they're all all around the world, or different countries, all around this country, and they've all got their own opinions, and they've got their own motives, and their own ideals, and their own messages they want to put out. So we're not not one big team that are all in on it together. You know, people, uh, they get inspired to go out and try it for themselves and they'll go out and, uh, you know, sometimes we see circles appearing in places. Now, I have to be careful what I say here because some people might just read this as, oh, so there are circles that you don't know what made them. And what I'm saying is, is there are circles that we don't know who made them, but we do know that people made them because as circle makers, you can see just by looking uh, how they would have done it, you know, you see the telltale signs you see the construction lines and things like that. So obviously there's so many people out there making them, I couldn't possibly speak for them all. All I could do is uh, speak for myself. And where do I see it going? I've got to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. I just know we've just reached a point in it now. I mean, this has been going on since the 70s, you know, with Doug and Dave, there's always been uh, lots of hoo-ha and arguments and things about, you know, who made them and uh, and stuff like that. But in 2012, it's got to an almost boiling point. Do not think that, uh, you know, a lot of researchers are getting quite venomous against uh, circle makers, and a lot of circle makers are getting a little bit venomous towards the researchers, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we all seem to be squabbling and arguing. Uh, so I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, by doing this, I, I think that part of human evolution is to understand all things. So when the truth is presented to you, it's the truth, you know, and we you just have to accept truths. You know, some people really enjoy living in a fantasy, and for them, you know, if that's what floats their boat, but, but really, eventually, like the expensive, uh, expenses um, scandal and all these things going on in politics at the moment, truths are popping out all over the place, aren't they? And I don't know whether that's something to do with uh, 2012 and the awakening, and, you know, the shift of consciousness, but, you know, if we are going for a shift of consciousness, then consciousness will... <laughs> let the truth be known of all things, and the truth behind crop circles are, is that they are man-made. You know, without a lead, I don't know, we'll all find out together, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, Raithi goes on, he's asked another question, which does sound like a little bit of a leading question, I've got to be honest. It's like, almost yeah. like as if you're trying to plant a seed here, I'm guessing, but uh, oh, it, it, he says... Um, he says, is anybody organising a huge meeting in the Eastfield this summer? <laughs> really? Okay. Is anybody? Well, I don't know. What do you think, Circle Maker? Well, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know we, if you're asking in some really weird way, I well, suppose in weird ways, it's pretty direct. Am I going to make a crop circle at Eastfield this year? Mm. Then my personal answer is no. But I don't speak for all, like I said, all circle makers and stuff like that. Well, all I don't know. Huge, <laughs> huge meeting? That's not like circle making. That sounds like, is it going to be a huge meeting? What do you mean by who, who he, uh, he says? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know, but he hasn't come back with a response yet. Does he mean yet, that so. all circle makers going to get together to do the mother of all circles? Yes, he says, can anybody see, pa see a past formation that could be represented, that could have represented 2012 DA14 in the field? DA14? I, I don't, I'm not... I'm you're losing me a bit there. I'm not, I'm, I'm not too sure what it means. I'm not too sure what DA14 means. But uh, DA14, oh, DA14 will actually get pretty close to Earth. It will pass us at a distance of about twenty thousand oh, kilometers, a twenty-seven, or a or something like that, seventeen thousand miles, twenty-seven thousand kilometers, or kilometers. An asteroid 
Oh, sorry, that's, uh, we're just asking, is it an asteroid? Yeah. A comet. Yes, oh. it's a comet. There we are. And when's that passing, sorry? Soon? Uh, 2012, by the sounds of it. Mm. Well, I'm sure somebody would have cottoned onto it somewhere and might be planning something. Mm. But apart from that, he says that. it's a rock. <laughs> he says it's a rock, um, which maybe means that it's not big enough to be classified as a comet. <laughs> what type of cheese? What's your favourite? What's your favourite cheese? Oh, what's right. my favourite cheese? Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm a bit of a cheeseaholic. Yeah. I like a bit of the old. Uh, is it afterburn? Or some people call it the Mexicana. It's the same thing. Loads of chilies in it. Yeah, I like a bit of that. Mm. A bit of smoke out wood. Anything. What they got? Send it in, Sam's address M Luke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, send it send it to Circle Makers anonymous <laughs> post box, yes. <laughs> Courtesy of uh Polly Carson. <laughs> yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, where was we on this uh, design thing? Where were we on a design? So yeah. we've done all those circles there. Yes. All the way up to the Back to the exciting bit, the design. So yes, you you say that you're pretty sure you started the lower half first. I hope you're right because if the bloody footage shows no, it'd be we different started now. The, the lower half on your picture, but it's actually the top half of the design, the head. Yes, from that little bit all the way around. You did to the, the, head, the head first, which is in the lower half. Then we can see here. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You'd say that's the lower half. Yeah. So, you, so you went all the way up to the upper half. So you did all these circles first at the yeah, bottom. We stopped to that last circle. Yes. And then we thought we'll go back to the middle and go all the way around near the tail. So we've got the basic shape. Yeah of the whole uh, serpent in place. So then you, you get it all the way to the top with all the circles. Yeah, and all the way around to the bottom. Okay. Are you you're quite, are you quite, by the way, I'm just asking, are you quite confident of what order you did all these in? I'm just asking because, I mean, I, I know for certain I wouldn't remember <laughs> yeah. exactly how I did something. I just know he did it. But are you confident? Yeah, I'm confident, confident? Uh, especially when it comes to the body there. I remember the order we'd done that. Right. Uh, maybe when it comes to that tail disc there, we all started splitting up into separate teams at that point, and we all had our jobs to do. Right. Uh, so whoever was um, doing that tail, they would have done it. The, the main body was definitely the first feature to be done. And yes. then a party moved onto the head, and another party moved onto the tail and started doing that. Um, and then after the head and the, the tail were finished, uh, another couple of people went and done all the grape shot, which took very long <laughs> to do. Yes. As you can tell, I was one of the people that had to do the grape shot all the way down. You can see the. Do you want to point to the grape shot there, just in between all of the, um, the circles? And of course, grape shot, uh, for those of you that don't know, is not a measured circle. It's basically you, you step into the crop where you think it looks right, and it is as simple as that. You stand in there and you hold a board out in front of you, and you get roughly the same distance from each circle. So once you know you're in position, you then basically put one end of the board on the ground. And with the other bit of the board slightly raised, you tread on the bit of the board that's on the ground. So you flatten out a small disc, and then you can spread it out one more board width if you like. Just go around the edge of it again until you just get a basic, um, you know, board and a half width of uh, grape shot. Hmm. Does that make sense? And then, of course, um, towards the end of the grape shots, get smaller, and then uh, when you can't use the board anymore, you just use your feet. And uh, what I generally do is uh, step into the area. Uh, use my hands to grab a uh, section of crop and then use that as the pivot point and I'll just sidestep, you know, or shuffle more like around it and then neaten up the edge so you get a small grape shot. Right. About a foot in diameter you can get all the way down to, you know. Yeah. Smaller than that if you get really intricate with your hands. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, so basically all the party did the head. I think somebody else then branched off to work on the tongue, if you want to get the tongue bit on there. Yeah, uh, to do the forked tongue. Uh, basically, while everything else was being tidied in. Now you can see they're running down the edge of the um, the main spine of the uh, the serpent, and you've got the grape shot, but then you can see a border going all the way around it to define it. Yes. Now that was important as well, because we wanted to you know, actually make it look like the body of a snake. And yeah. The circles almost look like the pattern on the back, you know? Okay. So somebody basically, and again, it was all done by freehand. You can actually see, see where the head is there. Yeah. Can you see the bit that is free foot is clearly free footed there, it's slightly wonky almost? Yeah, I was gonna say that didn't look to me yeah. quite right and I was gonna point that out actually, but yeah. yeah. Well it was the best that can be done in that circumstance because we knew at that point there was no measurement we could take uh, that wouldn't um, you know, disrupt the crop. To, if you if you were to use that uh, as a little central 
uh, you know, the outline of the circle. So we would have had to have stood in that upright cot there. Yes. Yeah, and uh, would have damaged it. So we didn't do that. And basically it was just done by eye and, uh, and very slowly drawn like a pencil, except using your feet, you know. Mm. And you can see where it's worked on both sides. It's a little bit wonky. But then that connects onto the edge of the uh, body all the way down is a border. And that's basically achieved by holding out the board to your middle yeah. and the width of the board there. Uh, uh, away from the edge of the circles. Of course, you've got to um, sort of free foot it a little bit again mm. in between where the grape shots are. Yeah, because there's some bits, if, if we have a, like, a look here, yeah. that, that looks a bit straighter than exactly, curved. Yeah. You know, I mean, that looks nice and curved, yeah. and that's lovely and curved. And again, here, there's a little bit of a bump. It's like somebody hasn't exactly, quite gone, yeah. gone yeah. Cor correct. I mean, and these, uh, and up here, sort of yeah, we're just pointing out now, and up here. Well, that bit there that you're pointing at was... Uh, very, very tricky because it actually runs almost parallel with the tram line there. Right. So once you've got a tram line going through there, it's going to disrupt anything you're doing straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that job was a particularly nasty job. Um, you know, everybody wasn't <laughs> was sort of dreading being asked to do that. Yeah. So the respect to the person who'd done it, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> <laughs> and I wouldn't have enjoyed doing it myself. But I think under the circumstances, he had done a, a pretty good job. So oh, yeah. Free hand. I you mean, if, if anything, I would I would say that uh, you you can't really spot these things unless somebody points them out to you because no. you have to you have to look. There's so much going on to the eye. The eye sees what it wants to see. It sees a perfect curve, and only if you look to see if the curve isn't quite perfect do you start spotting you know these extra little bits yeah, exactly. that aren't perfect. So, um, what do, what are your feelings on that? I mean, how is the circle received? Do you think people notice these little things or not? Well, I haven't I certainly haven't seen anything that um, suggests that. Let's put it that way. I yeah, mean, I can see it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure the people who are involved in its creation can also see the the wonkiness. They're not mistakes. Far from it. You know, it's just just the way it goes. Um, yeah, as you can see, it looks particularly from that angle there. But also find as well that when, um, should we say, believers or researchers or, you know, the devout followers look at these things, their eye seems to correct any mistakes that they, you know, uh, that are there. Uh, for example, um, I know somebody who's a thatcher, uh, thatches cottages and things like that, you know, and uh, he's out there and to me his roofs look absolutely immaculate in every way. Yes. And yet, as the, uh, the artist behind the, the thatching, it will stand back and look up at the street and just say, no, nah, it's not good, that could have done that bit better, you know, and things like that. And I guess it's exactly the same for the, uh, the, the circle makers. Because you know what you're looking at, you can see that it's not, you know, quite right. But uh, most of the people that look at that and have never seen their design before, uh, you know, they'll just look over those sort of mistakes and just hopefully the wow factor will, uh, you know, yeah, there's Dorothy. Oh, sorry, Dorothy is asking: Are there any researchers that attribute this circle as being genuine, or are they saying it's a hoax? No, uh, as far as I can tell, again, they're saying it's um, a genuine. And in fact, I think it was Francine Blake on her calendar. Uh, thanks to her for putting it on the front cover, which is fantastic. Um, inside the calendar, she said it was viewed by many to be uh, the best formation of the year. Uh, which is uh, yeah, very good. Very well, good. well. Yes, I, I remember seeing that on the uh, the front of the calendar, and uh, yeah, you know, it kind of says it all, really, doesn't it? You know, they they, they hailed this one as being the best. So there we go. Mm. And and we've already shown, and I think people probably can see, and if they start looking at photos, they will see. Uh, there are a few little sort of. Um, glitches in there that you know you you've got to look for them mm. uh, but they are there so that in itself would kind of give away the fact that possibly this wasn't perfect extraterrestrial work yeah um it was more than likely done by people but it's amazing how many people can't see that you know they just cannot see the wood for the trees they can't lock on to this being a man-made formation and i mean you've you've read some stuff by uh red collie haven't you and, and in I know regards you, to this circle yeah. yes yes very much in regards to this circle i mean what are you, what are your feelings on on that then well it's uh, i don't know it, it begs belief to be honest with you because uh, like i said earlier that um for years the researchers have been saying well if it's human made then where's the proof where's the video evidence and stuff so you finally do that <laughs> here it is you can quite clearly see, and I know you can you condense it down to a, 
you know, a shorter viewing, didn't you? But you've still got the original yeah. coffee up there, haven't you? So you can actually see how long the bloody thing took to make. Well, and you can quite clearly see us moving around in there. I'd be happy if people don't mind perhaps slightly lower quality. I can put the whole six hours up and they can speed it up themselves then if they want to. But well, maybe you should do that as an option for anybody. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just the bloody, poly, maybe. bloody bandwidth, yeah. yeah. I mean, it takes a long time on uh, most broadband connections to upload stuff. So say two gigs is going to take me a good day and a half of uploading mm. um, to get the thing up there. And if people want the whole six hours in high res, I mean, we're talking like three or four gigs maybe of upload that has to be done per hour. So that I'll have to do that times five. That's the whole of a bandwidth allocation for a month for somebody. So I'd have to find somebody who's got a really fast broadband connection and no problems with uh, allocation. And I will, I would happily give them the whole six hours unsped up. You know, see for myself. <laughs> they, yeah, I mean, they, there is a slight thing that um, the camera is put on to low... Uh, What's it called? Low light mode. So it actually does pulse at about, I think it's every uh, one second. So, you know, because it's actually gaining light into the into the viewfinder and it's it, it's doing it, um, then it, it, it's not running at absolute normal speed. Some bits are when I turn that mode off, but it gets a bit dark then. But um, for the most part, it is actually running at like one frame per second. Um, but that's fine, you know, if people want to see that, we could. If, if anybody's got a really mad broadband connection and wants to upload this, I'd give them permission to uh, to do it. But, I mean, people people like Red Collie have denied this on the basis of uh, denied this footage saying it's been photoshopped. But, I mean, you know, still, you've got five hours worth of footage. Photoshopped five hours? Does Does anybody know in high definition how long that would take to render and how how many artefacts you'd probably get in there that would give away how it was done. You know, it, it, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I don't know if people have ever tried doing this, but, I mean, you think about Lord of the Rings, you know, a team of animators from New Zealand, and they were, they were working for years to get the graphics for that movie, and um, basically the movie was only three hours long, and we've got five hours' worth of footage here, and I mean, like one person, myself, you know, limited budget to produce CGI of that nature for that length. I don't think so somehow. <laughs> but there we go. Um, so. Mm, I don't know why Red Collie is um, pretty adamant. I mean, I suppose I should uh, be flattered. He is quite adamant, you know, that he's impressed with the design that much that he just can't believe that it can be made by humans. But, you know, mm. pyramids are made by humans. Yes. Well, we've got a, um, well, Rod, I'll just take this one first. Roger W. says, he says, uh, funny, he says he likes Red Collie's obstinate take on this. He says it's funny, but not totally batty. I think he's being sarcastic there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got one from Steve Irwin, and he says, can I ask the guest, Drew? Well, who's the guest, Drew? Uh, oh, can I have, <laughs> sorry, I thought I was calling him <laughs> Drew then. I, his name's uh, Tom. So, uh, can I ask if the guest drew and designed this formation? Uh, yes, and uh, I had help with a colleague of mine. Um, did they not see the bit where I showed them all the, the pre? Uh, he or, may, uh, did he come in a bit later? I don't know if he came in a bit late, because he is sort of... Um, yeah, he hadn't been chatting in the channel, so maybe he didn't see that at the beginning. Oh, yes. Watch, well, at the watch beginning, the... I, I kind of explained that, yes, I did, but I, it yeah. was in collaboration with a, a good friend of mine. Yeah. And, um, it yeah, he said he came in late. That's oh, fine. Right. Yeah. So it is there. If you watch the review of this show on YouTube, um, then it will be up there for you. In a nutshell, yes. I'm glad I had help. Yeah. You, you had somebody else actually uh, redraw this for you as well. Yes. Didn't you? And they yeah. came up with the, the finished design. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I think Wraithy, I missed one up here, is saying if by genuine one means non human, and if by hoax you mean human, which formation, in the guest's opinion, is the best genuine formation for e ever? Which do I think is the best genuine? Genuine, i.e. non-human. Well, <laughs> is, that, is that right? Is that what he's asking me? Well, I don't think there is any genuine one, so I don't know how to answer that one. Mm. Is he asking me just what my favourite crop circle is of all time? Well, well he, he's trying to get you to be specific. If by genuine one means non-human, and if by hoax you mean human, which 
formation in the guest's opinion is the best genuine one i.e but you could split it down and say well does he mean genuine i.e non-human because it hasn't been claimed because some people rate you know genuine as not being claimed um so are we talking about hoax because somebody has named it as being human made or are we talking about ones that people haven't claimed so therefore genuine i.e non-human <laughs> Is that confused it enough oh, yet? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, in my opinion, they're all uh, man-made, and my favourite circle, I think, is going to have to be... Uh, well, there's, there's two, actually. One definitely deserves a, a, a nod to, and that's the um, uh, the big alien face with the disc at the bottom of it. Oh, Remember yes. that one? There's crab one of lions. The Crabwood Alien. Crabwood Alien. I think that's pretty phenomenal, actually. Um, and also my other favourite one is... Um, the big Milk Hill formation of 2001. Yes. Up on the top there. Um, to me, that, I always look at that and think, oh, I wish I'd thought of something like that. You know what I mean? Because that's phenomenal. And uh, hats off. Well, in a strange it's way, I suppose ball. that um, that is, is, is like lots of these serpents all going round and round and round because suppose, yeah, because it, it sort of spirals out in the same sort of form, doesn't it? In it a, does, in a way. yes, it does. And um, if, you, if you duplicated the serpent Dung 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 around many times. It's sort of like at the same sort of effect, but yeah, uh, as a yeah, like maybe a pearl effect going around with all the circles. But it's a different yeah, th- a basic uh, shape though. Um, yes, but its sheer size and magnitude is just absolutely fantastic. Mm. Know, it's, it's definitely up there for me. Right. So I hope that answers this question. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't too sure what he was actually asking me. Okay. Well, Dorothy is asking, where does the guest take his inspiration for his designs from? I've noticed a lot of flower of life designs and Taurus designs taken from ancient artifacts and sites. Would this be a fair assumption? Yes, uh, I think it just depends on what folks the circle makers boat, you know, what they're into. I mean, me personally, I, I like I've explained before, um, really like the spiritual side of things. So all the designs that I try to come up with have to have some sort of meaning. Not all of them, obviously in the past, you know, I've made ones that just look basically pretty. You know, I've do, we've all done circles like that where you've, you set about with your compass and your your ruler and your uh, pencil and you, you scribe out something. You think, oh, that looks nice, and you kind of work on that. And hey, presto, you know. Um, but I think my later ones, I've been trying to actually say something. You know, um, uh, things that I think are important about the evolution of man, the uh, you know the reason of consciousness and things like that. Again, like the serpent, uh, uh, another sort of. Um, meaning behind it as well, which I, I found particularly appealing is, I mean, people might take this the wrong way, and I don't want them to, but at the beginning of the book of uh, Genesis, it talks about the serpent coming down and, um, and uh, tempting Eve to eat the apple from the tree of knowledge. And a lot of Christians kind of look at that and uh, they say that that's the devil tricking people, you know, to, to go over to the dark side. Uh, but actually, when you take that text for what it's saying, is um, it's saying that, God has forbidden people to understand things and know things and have knowledge. And the serpent actually was trying to say, well, here, <laughs> have some knowledge, eat from the tree of knowledge, which, uh, you know, God forbade humans to do. So is the serpent a bad character? Because it's a misconception that the serpent represented the devil. Mm. Uh, it didn't. There's no reference to that serpent being the devil. It just says a serpent came down and tempted them to eat, you know, and people um, actually... Uh, assumed it to be the devil. Um, but actually, it was a, a symbolic moment, I think, you know. The yeah, snake. The, the devil is. teach you to <laughs> learn and be knowledgeable. Yeah, the devil is the drug dealer of the truth, and he, sa- and he says, fucking have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so um, uh, yeah, there's, uh, it's important to put a, a spiritual message. For me, it's important to put a spiritual message behind everything. So, uh, it is interesting you mention that because, uh, you know, you also parallel with what you said earlier on about wanting to help people understand the truth. Yeah. And, you know, the serpent design just happens to have that kind of uh, element to it, which is... It uh, does, yeah. 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 So it's... Uh, so it's sort of multi, multi-level. Harmonic, <laughs> dimensional. Yeah. Multi-dimensional. Uh, right, so we've got... Um, Steve Irwin is asking, where is the Circle Maker's favourite mystical spot in Wiltshire? Well, favourite mystical spot in Wiltshire? Well... well so many places that I like going, I don't think I've got a personal favourite, but um, I'm not drawn specifically to 
Stonehenge, I know a lot of people do for, you know, the equinox and the solstice and what have you. Uh, it's nice, uh, but for me it's a different sort of vibe there, so I'm more attracted to Avebury. Definitely Avebury, and um, yeah, I'd, I'd say West Kent Longborough has to be really up there for me. I've had some wonderful experiences in there. Um, we've been up there drumming at night time and did we doing and meditating and doing all these brilliant things. Been out there before, it's been like a Stone Age nightclub, which is just funky. <laughs> so, I'd say, yeah, if I had to choose, I'd say West Kent Longborough. Or well, that whole area just there, so we hill West Kent Longborough and uh, sort of Head Springs around that area. Great, okay. Uh, we've got one where Steve Owen is saying, where does he like to go slash work? Where do I look? What, uh, out in the field? It sounds like it, go slash work. You know, work on crop circles, I think. Where does well, he like to go? Well, it, the Wiltshire area. I mean, I haven't really ventured outside of the Wiltshire area. Um, it's just, just in, what, it, you've got Tornado Alley up in um, uh, America. I guess you've got Crop Circle Alley. Going right up the middle of the Valley of Bues, isn't you? So anywhere around that area, really. I've worked in a few other places around there. Um, yeah, just not too far out, really. I, I haven't done anything. I think, actually, to be honest with you, Westwood A Down is the furthest I've ever been away from the, the thing, uh, you know, from the, the centre of it all. I actually, we chose that. Originally, you see, it was uh, destined to be over this way more, you know, maybe Eastfield or something like that. But uh, we had a feeling that we shouldn't do it there. Uh, I know that the... The farmer of that land is um, getting a little bit upset with it all now, and uh, you know I want to kind of respect that. And plus, I didn't want to risk it being mowed out straight away, which, as it turned out, it was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we chose that spot because, well, we had to take in mind um, the fact that you were filming it, and it needed a hill where you get a good clear view, not too many street lights in the background, somewhere where we wouldn't be disturbed, and a big enough field to do such a monster in, you know. So. Um, yeah, I'll work anywhere really if it feels right. Mm. I mean, I could have done with more light for sure because it it was pushing the night vision equipment uh -huh. to the to the limits really, and that's why there's a lot of grain there, which you know people are saying like you know it's got loads of grain and it looks like it's been done on a computer. Well, that is actually night vision grain. If you look at night vision when you see the news or various bits of footage, you will see that speckling, especially if it's very dark. Um, right, we've got some other questions. I think uh, Roger W was saying, could you tell? Could you ask the guest to tell us something about how the design was created, i.e. exactly how was it originated and from what starting point? But I think he says that now that's been answered, that one. So, yeah. ah, right, so yeah, so he's, he's happy with the answer to that. Um, does the design ever relate to a 3D shape being flattened to 2D? So are you trying to sort of encapsulate something three-dimensional down into two dimensions in the field. Ever tried anything like that yourself? Not really. Well, I've done. Um, I guess it was sort of a pyramid thing, but it wasn't really 3D. It was more the silhouette of a 3D pyramid um, that was uh, lifted out of the design by a, a flattened disc behind it. So it just gave the impression that the pyramid was three dimensional and coming slightly towards you. But um, no, I've seen you know other. Other um, circle makers that have done similar things to that, but not me personally. No, I will do two D really. Mm. Mm. And Jimmy Sparrow, first question from him. Uh, question to guest: Is the point of your art to prove that people can make the crop circles? Is that the point of your art? It's one of the points on this particular piece. Mm. Yeah, I mean the others have all been messages. See, the thing is, I don't set out to deceive people. Um, in that if somebody asked me what my opinion is about circles and do I think they're man-made, I'll always answer the truth. You know, I, I, won't, I won't lie about it. You know what I mean? But uh, so when I put, a, when I put a, a design out there that we haven't filmed and it's not for the purpose of revealing it to be human-made, I haven't told anybody, believe that's an alien that's made that. You know, people have made assumptions about it or they've, you know, uh, listened to what research have had to say about it and stuff. So it's not, it's not me deceiving them. I put it down there for my own personal reasons and uh, the team's reasons and, um, you know, however people perceive it after that, well, that's, that's their thing, isn't it, really? I'm not actively trying to fool or trick anybody. Uh, so, um, yeah, not all of my circles have been solely around uh, trying to reveal them as human-made. Okay. Uh, and... Uh Roger W is saying, was the snake design worked out in relation to where it was going to be placed, or could it have been placed anywhere? Which you kind of sort of went into the... Yeah, it, it could have been placed 
Mm. Yeah, to have the criteria of a uh, large enough field behind it and a big enough field to accommodate it. Um, and that was about it, really, for the location. You know, and somewhere that felt nice and looked nice. And, uh, you know, if you've ever... Well, you have, obviously, but, you know, if the uh, listeners have ever been over that way, to an ink pen around there, it's phenomenal. Absolutely stunning area. Really is, yeah. If, yeah. You, if you've never been there, take a little take a little drive in the summer. Don't just visit the Vale of Pusey. It's nice nice in in the respect of uh, sticking something in a place that will attract people so they'll see something new, something yeah. different, you know. Uh, and I think there was a, an effort by one other circle maker um, to try and take people to new places because it's almost like as if you're regurgi- regurgitating the same old places, yes. the same old yeah. ideas, you know, and it's like... It's not fair on the farmers to keep <laughs> putting mm. up with it year in, year out, year in, year out. You know, I don't think, can we? Yeah. yeah. And it's a bit, you know, a bit... Um, you know, f- oh, well, I've lost my point. It's a bit. <laughs> yeah, we'll forget it's that. It's a bit. It's a bit, yeah. Um... I was reading a question and it made me lose my, my thing. Right, Steve Irwin says, Matt, can I get hold of any free Honeyfest tickets this year? Well, um, <laughs> it's not called Honeyfest, is it? It's not called Honeyfest, <laughs> it's called Unifest, Onifest, um, which is kind of like one fest. And I was kind of like a bit sort of, hmm, when I heard that, because I thought, well, that sounds like a bit sort of Radio 1, like one fest, or, you know, and it sounds a bit like sort of, hmm, look at me, me fest, you know, and it's like, so I thought, oh, God, whose ego's got involved here and bloody changed this name now, and I was all like sort of, about it, you know, thinking, well, they've changed it from being Honey Fest, and it was Honey Fest, which told you that it was Honey Street, and, and now it's bloody one fest, and they're trying to take it away from being Honey Street, and away from the barge, and, and I bet you the barge isn't even bloody involved in it anymore. And actually, I was slightly wrong on some of that. And uh, what it is, they called it One Fest because apparently the name Honey Fest is owned by somebody. And I, sh- I probably shouldn't say too much, but who, who the person who owns the name won't let them use it. So halfway through organising the festival, they decided to sort of say, you can't use that name, that's mine, I copyrighted that name and trademarked it, so you can't use it, and therefore, fuck you. So they said, well, all right, then we'll change the name. Bit naughty, really, isn't it? Oh, hello, what we got going on here? (laughs) Just tell me to turn it off. Mm. All right, I'll turn it off so you can do something. There you go. Yeah, thanks. You're in full front. Full frontal, <laughs> yes. So apparently, yes, the uh, Honey Fest has been changed to One Fest. It is still organised by the Barge. Um, and there is a way you can get free tickets if you want to be a volunteer. So if you're down in the summer and you can definitely guarantee your time and you're reliable enough because they, you know, they, they won't stand for any shenanigans, you will have to do some work. Uh, but if you want to sort of work as a volunteer, making sure that, you know, people aren't sort of getting in for nothing or whatever. And you'll be very close to the festival at all times um, and you'll get time off so you can go and see your favourite band or whatever. Um, yep, put yourself down as a volunteer. So, uh, Roger W. Guest. Um, guest, when you allowed Matt to film the making of the snake, did, do you think he did it from the right position? Well, yeah, I mean, if you scroll down on that... Um I think and then you have some uh, ground shots there. Although yeah. there was a, a shot from you might have might be coming up next one down. Hang on a sec. Yeah, there we are, yeah that so was roughly where he was positioned with it. Yeah, let's just uh bring that up on screen so you can see. Yeah, I mean basically back from that position, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It was the the best sort of angle that we had at the time. And of course because it was quite uh, populous at night time. Uh, you know, you get people go driving up there at night time. Um you had to be in a place where you weren't disturbed so much. So, uh, yeah, I think that was the best kind of spot. But does the person who asked that question think that Matt had the best position? I do. You can quite clearly see it happen. You can see the shape. Yeah, Steve Irwin uh, thinks exactly like I do, because when he said, was I in the best position, I was going to say myself, or doggy style. And he, he <laughs> says, was it lying down doggy style, missionary position? <laughs> Fellatio? Cunnilingus? <laughs> <laughs> or, or am I a cunning linguist? Well, I don't think so. Um, but yes, it was probably the best position for me to to film because you needed to look down at at enough of an angle 
if I, I'll be honest here, it wasn't the first choice. There was another field that was even better than this one, uh, but it just looked like a nightmare for the circle makers to actually walk down the hill because it was so steep. And we couldn't quite work out where to park for that one. So this seemed a bit nearer the road and it was easier to just drop them off on the road, drive to the top of the hill, park up and walk out across this lip of the hill and look down. But there's actually another hill fairly nearby. And if, you, if you're driving towards that position from, ooh, what's the name of the place? Hungerford. And you come across Hungerford Common, I believe it is, and you head up that way, you may pass by this hill. It's very, very steep drop off the side down into a crop field beneath it. And I, I thought that would be the ideal place. Looking right down, you, it's almost as if you'd have been hovering above the crop circle, looking down at it from above. But it was so steep that it probably was going to be too hard to get people down at night. Um, so this is why this one was chosen instead. And in a way, not a bad thing, because if we had got a field where we were looking down almost practically over the top, guess what people would have said? If you think about it, what would they say? They would say, you can't see any street lights, you can't see any reference points, it's bullshit, you know, because you can't see anything. And they would have said, you should have had it at more a more um, sideways angle so you could see those background things. So in a way, I think the fact that you had features there in the distance that you could make out that it was that field actually worked for it. So that was a good thing. What do you think, Mr. Shirklemaker? Oh, make... I knew you were going to do that. I was looking at the bunny. No, I'm not, you're not on yet. So three, two, one, you're on. Yeah. Stop picking your nose. Do, do you want to ask me another question? Because I was actually reading the, uh, some of that thing and I wasn't actually listening to what you were saying. You weren't listening to a word of it. Okay. <laughs> I'll do apologize. Okay. Question to guest. Is there another... This is from Jimmy Sparrow, by the way. Is another point to your art to make fools of certain researchers? No. That's not where I come from at all. No. I mean, I think people, I'm not saying researchers specifically, but people can just make fools of themselves, you know. Uh, I don't need to make fools out of people. Some of the things that people say are absolutely, you know, ludicrous, but uh, no, that's not the intention beyond the art. The intention beyond the art is to inspire and, uh, you know, to give people good, um, good feelings and, uh, you know, question things. It's definitely not to make a mockery of anything. Yeah. No, because that, that's negative and I'm not into that really. Mm. Yeah, so it's it's more if you're trying to help people understand that it's man-made, you're, you're just sending that wide, not yeah. to a specific focal point of one. No, fooling people is just yeah. a horrible thing. What I want people to realise is that humans are capable of doing some pretty amazing things. And crop circles just one of those. You know, there's bigger things out there that people need to really be, you know, worrying about. But um, when you look at the things that humans have made, you know, some of the engineering feats that we've done... Uh, the Hadron Collider and, uh, you know, satellites and the space station, stuff like that. It's amazing. And I would not have the first clue how to make any of that, but I wouldn't then give human power away and say humans are too crap to be able to make things like that. <laughs> I'll just, oh, I'll just put it down to, I don't understand how they've done it, and I'm amazed at how they've done it. I'm not saying that aliens, <laughs> you know, made those things. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the... Well, it's an interesting point. I mean, do you have any background in design or art or, you know, was your crop circles your sort of first foray into... No, I've always been um, artistic. I can draw and uh, I draw, uh, enjoy uh, drawing. I'm very creative in that way. But uh, no, I didn't, you know, I didn't study art at school or do anything. I've never had a job that involves anything to do with art or anything like that. I've just, uh, you know, loved it. And then when I... Uh, discovered crop circles and the fact that they were made by humans where just blew me away and I thought, oh, I really want to be a part of this, you know. Where else can you get your art, um, you know, shipped around the world in a nanosecond? As soon as it goes up in the crop circle connector, that's around the world, man. <laughs> Thousands of people around the world can just look at that and you think, I've done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It, t it, it self advertises, it takes care of itself. It, it does, has its yeah. own news agency that you, is free for you. Exactly. Yeah, it's art that nobody can own. Because I always say, I'm sure you'll agree as well, that when you've made the design at night time and the whole team have had that experience, mm. uh, as soon as that sunlight comes up next day, it's not yours anymore. You know, you've had your experience with it. It's somebody else's turn now. Mm. So it's whoever finds it and whatever happens after that. Yes. Um, so I'll take these out of sequence then. Somebody saying, did you ever own... A, well, Dorothy is saying, did you ever own a spirograph as a child? <laughs> Funny enough, no, I didn't. 
Which right. I did. And there's just things that you... It's like, um, you stick your pencil in there and just move it around and it does <laughs> crazy shapes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've never done it. If we had to make crop circles like spirographs, it'd be bloody complicated. People oh, always God, yeah. they always say, "Oh, crop circles, spirographs," and they they make them seem like they're the same. They may have aspects that may look the same because they repeat. You know, so spirographs. There's often things that will spiral around and repeat a lot of times. But the method of actually making a crop circle like a spirograph, <laughs> boy, that would be bloody hard. And if anybody could do it. I think you'd impress people because, you know, what would you have to take? You'd have to actually take a cog set out into the field, wouldn't you? Like a, thir- you know, a hundred foot wide cog to run inside another circle to actually around wobble around the edges and sort of produce. Oh wow, that would be kind of that would be something. Um, right, we've got other questions as well. Uh, let's have a look. Um, do you believe in UFOs? From Steve Irwin. Um, well. Yes, and um, no at the same time. Yes, that there are unidentified flying objects, but I don't know, the jury's out on there. Are they aliens? That's the thing for me. Because uh, I think it's all too convenient sometimes for the powers that be that we believe in aliens and x sort of things, uh, because maybe it diverts us from the truth, which I don't know what the truth is, but if you, if you just look back at the evidence, like, um, for example, Area... 51. That's the most famous non-existent airbase on the entire planet, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody knows it's there, but the official line from the American government is it doesn't exist. So what's that doing to the um, you know the psychology of the the people? You know, it sort of reinforces the <coughs> um, the idea of extraterrestrials even deeper, doesn't it? Like when the Roswell incident happened, uh, first of all, it all came out that it was a UFO crash saucer and stuff like that. And I think it was the next day or the day after that, something like that, they retracted that statement. They said, no, it wasn't a UFO, it was a weather balloon. And uh, what that actually done then to the people was dug it in even deeper. They thought, well, it really has to be a UFO now, because now the government are really blatantly covering it up. Do you understand what I mean? So it kind of puts you down there. And you get these um, lights in the sky around Area 51 and, and all these things. And I, th- I just wonder, are they government black projects? Uh, that they're trying out technology that we, we just can't comprehend um, yet. Um, and all they find those around and they're just very happy for us to say, yeah, it's aliens and it's ETs and stuff like that, because it just is completely so far away from what it actually is. They're quite, you know, happy for you to think that. Mm-hmm. It just gets me thinking sometimes. I know people have experiences with um, flying saucers and UFOs and things like that, and, I, you know, I'm not denying that people do have experiences. Um, but I just sometimes wonder... You know, the uh, the whole alien thing seems a bit Hollywood. You know, um, Closing Council of the Third Kind, that typical alien grey with the big eyes and stuff. Sure, it's Steven Spielberg. Were there images of that, that particular being before Steven Spielberg came up with that film, do you know? You know, the, the being with the long arms, it's got the big goggle eyes and stuff. I'm just trying to think whether Betty and Barney Hills were aliens were like that or not. I'm, I can't... It'd be an interesting yeah. point, you know. Can they be traced back before closing counters of the third kind? I don't know. Mm. But, you know, you've got things like the X-Files. I mean, the alien grey is an established um, icon, isn't it, almost? You know, that's what people expect aliens to look like. But it, to me, I don't know, I'm suspicious of it. So, uh, no, in answer to that question is, yeah, do I think there's life on other planets? That's a whole different question, because uh, statistically, when you look at the sheer scale of the entire universe, uh, you'd have to be a fool to think that life couldn't, um, you know, generate from other planets. But then again, you have to entertain the idea as well. As impossible as it sounds, it might be true that the Earth is uh, the cradle of all life in the entire universe, and that the universe is so young that life hasn't found a way off this planet yet. It could be that, you know. Mm. You have to um, acknowledge all possibilities. That's what I'm saying. Right. And so far, I've not seen anything that helps me to believe in aliens and uh, U- UFOs in you know that sense of the, the term. Yeah, Steve Irwin says that E.T. style, that the style of E.T.s changed after the Close Encounters movie came out. So uh, I don't well, know if that's a, agree with what I said. Though, I don't know if that's a fact or if it's his opinion, but um, you know that's interesting. It's interesting to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Before that, he says it was more Nordic related and human esque, which yes, I can agree that in the fifties, uh, Ad- well, Adamski was kind of having. Meetings with humanoids, you know, with blonde hair and blue eyes and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So they change according to the way we, you know, maybe the films at the time, it might be as simple as that, you know. I know that they project that image into your head of what they want you to believe, and off it goes. You know, that's the way we do. Look at a movie, you think, oh, I'd really like that to be real, and your mind somehow makes it real. Yeah. And then you take it on yourself then, and those who created that image sit back, rub their hands together and say, there you go, job done. Yeah. There's also the uh, the thing of cultural tracking, which is uh, whereby people may have been seeing aliens in a different form, in you know, for the last couple of thousand years, and and they may have called them different things, like they may have been uh, fairies, you know, and uh, yeah. imps and goblins and things like that, you know, that uh, came to sort of take people at night when they were dreaming and take children from their beds and. You know all this sort of stuff, and uh, you know the the movies and popular culture has changed people's ideas of what these things are meant to look like, and so they've changed in in people's understanding and perception. Uh, mm. So, yeah, and it may be that you know, given a vacuum, your brain has to fill it in with something. It, it fills it in with whatever is the cultural idea of what you're meant to see. You know, exactly. you start to see the idea that you're meant to see it so you that's exactly what you see yeah um yeah. right we've got uh roger w is saying when you've made crop circles have you ever experienced anything that you thought was paranormal um well that's kind of hard one there's nothing that you can say like the balls of light and things like that I'm sort of physical but i've, I've out making circles i've experienced um the stretching of time, which is a kind of a, a strange sort of thing, seems to go on for a hell of a lot longer. It's hard to describe, really. Um, but when you're, but when you're um, out there in the field and you keep looking at your clock, it just seems to go very, very slowly. And I, I don't know, I don't know if that's just my perception or whatever, um, the elasticated time sort of thing. Uh, but I've also I know a, a circle maker who was out on the end of. Um, uh, the tape measure, scribing out a circle, and uh, she actually bumped into some sort of force field or some energy thing right next to her, and there was clearly nothing else in the field. Uh, I think it was a bit foggy that night, if I remember correctly, but you know, not that foggy that you couldn't see right next to you. And uh, yeah, she bumped into that, so that was kind of a bit weird. Um, yeah, so I've had, uh, I've, I've seen very strange weather systems. Uh, that 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 seemed to happen all the way around the area of the circle, but not in the actual circle itself. Uh, I guess that can be sort of strange, but yeah, weird. I'd say paranormal. I'm not so sure about. You know, mm. does that make any sense? Yes, indeed. Yeah, mm. I'm just going to read out. We've got uh, nine users in channel at the moment. So we've got Balls, Dorothy, Dave D, Davy D, Jimmy Sparrow, Pixie Dread, Plan Nine, Roger W, and Steve Irwin. I think we might have had a few more earlier on, but uh, I think somebody pressed the ban button, didn't they? <laughs> I'm not uh, admitting anything. Nothing to do with me. So, um, yes. So, Roger uh, W is saying, guest, thank you. So, uh, hey, you're welcome. Yeah, Steve Irwin is saying, cultural tracking, uh, cultural tracking will affect the perception of crop circles. And he was saying earlier on, uh, cultural tracking is the most unappreciated aspect of ufology. I, I agree there. I think that um, it's never really talked about that much, but uh, things have changed over the years. It's not just aliens have appeared suddenly in 1947 and started abducting people. It was kind of like maybe they were always there in different forms abducting people, and it's just the the face has changed, you know, and that is the, uh, the thing that people need to be aware of. So, uh, yes, yeah, so if you've got any more questions, please, please do ask, and... Um, well, is there anything you want to bring up, uh, Mr. Circle Maker? Because we're, we're taking questions thick and strong here. Anything that we haven't mentioned so far? Uh, what, in regards to uh, that circle? That circle or circle making in general, if you have any other... Well, maybe I'll ask the uh, listeners what they think of that serpent circle and um, maybe their opinion of uh, what we were actually setting out to do that night, you know, i.e. filming it and things. Yeah, what, what do, do people think about, think about that, that formation then, yeah? That's a good good idea. Bounce it back on them. <laughs> yeah. Make it their responsibility to find ideas to finish the show with and make up time. It's your responsibility. Yes. Um, okay, so we've got... Uh, don't answer if you don't want to, but have you any interesting crop circle plans for 2012? <laughs> I think I did answer that earlier, didn't I? Or oh, no, somebody asked, is there going to be a big meeting in, uh, in uh, Eastfield? But... Um, 
If I'm being absolutely honest, uh, I haven't really thought of anything just yet. I've been too busy working on uh, a few other bits and bobs that are um, crop circle related. Um, so no, no plans of yet. Right, okay. Um, does the mystery, this is Jimmy Sparrow by the way, does the mystery of the origins of the crop circles play any part in your art? Does the mystery of the origins, well it depends what you think were the origins of the crop circles. Mm. Uh, because as I understand it, the origin of the crop circles was uh, Doug and Dave. Uh, if you're talking about the Moan Devil and things like that, well, I don't think the Moan Devil's... <laughs> An actual true account of a uh, crop circle from 1678, was it supposed to be? Yeah. Um, so no, I'm, I'm not convinced of that. So what does it actually mean? Does the history of it play any part? Towards does the mystery of the origins of the crop circles play any part in your art? So are you kind of looking at the past of, you know, what people thought about crop circles and trying to incorporate it in your art? No. You know, like, short answer that, I guess. I suppose no. we could say, you know, you, you've done the, the mowing devil, then there's the uh, Tully saucer nest in... Oh, well, that was, was that a different thing altogether, though? That was the it? one that started Doug, Doug and Dave off, it I think, inspired Doug. them. Yes. But then we don't know where the Tully circles came from as well. You know, maybe it was just the beginning <laughs> of circles over in uh, Australia. Yeah. Down in Australia, shall I say. That's what it was, wasn't it? Queensland, yeah. Australia. Yeah. So would you, you be considering doing something like that then when you're thinking, oh yes, maybe people will think this is a source or has landed? Have you ever kind of incorporated that as one of your ideas? Oh, you know? uh, have I deliberately tried to make it look like aliens in the past, you mean? Yeah, possibly. Mm, no, I can't say so I've actually done it. Because when I look back at all the designs that I've done, there's nothing really that could have been mistaken for a uh, UFO, you know, because the like classic landing thing is spot, the, yeah. yeah, the landing sort of shape, so I've never done anything like that. Um, Yours are all more representational, you know, they yeah, actually... Yeah, the earlier ones, like I said, when I was starting to um, uh, get the hang of it, there were more pretty designs and, uh, you know, things that I thought would look good, and then I sort of changed tact and decided to actually put, you know, pictograms down and, and things like that. But nothing to do with aliens. Right, okay. Um, yeah, Dorothy is saying uh, here, uh, does your guest enjoy a good protest? Because I've seen him in that mask at every protest ever seen <laughs> yeah, on TV me. all over the world. Do I enjoy a good... Yeah, everybody likes a good protest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And these, these masks are fantastic. It just describes <laughs> it perfectly. Yeah. Uh, is it? I, mean, I, love the, I love the whole V for Vendetta thing. V for Vendetta, indeed, yes. Yeah. I think I think you were one of the people who sort of turned. Were you the person who told me about that movie, or did I see it before you? Are you were rave it. You raved about it, didn't I, you? I've raved about it. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Some of the same people do the Matrix, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Is it Joel with the Wachowski brothers or something? That's the one. Wachowski brothers. With yeah. the Wachowski brothers. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. If you haven't seen it, see it. Profound. Yes, V for Vendetta, definitely, yeah. yes. And uh, some people believe that when this country does get turned over in a revolution, that uh, people actually will wear these masks yeah. <laughs> yeah. in in large amounts. Do you know, I've seen the Vs sprayed up on um, walls and on uh, roads and things like that. Yes. Yeah, the red V in the circle. Well, it's interesting because it used to be that people would spray Vs up um, when it was the... the series, the TV series about the reptilians yeah, called reptiles. V. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do, yeah. And people used to spray graffiti Vs. And I, it was much more popular in um, Europe. I remember when I, I went to Spain and Greece and I saw a lot of them sprayed up on the walls, V, V, V in graffiti. But, um, you know, so, yeah, it's interesting they chose that uh, letter in the same way. But Right, Jimmy Sparrow is asking, he says it's his last question, yeah. and he says, so it's, well, but it'd be a good one then. Um, yeah. I mean the fact that origins are considered to have been mysterious origins. Does that play any part in your art? Is it, or is it at all about the fact that you make them? Do you want me to read that again? Yeah, please. Okay. I th this is what he's trying to explain himself. He says, I mean the fact that the circles are considered to have mysterious origins. Mm. Does that play any part in your art about the fact that you make them? Um... No, not really. I kind of think I know where it's coming from. Is, are you trying to, like, 
tap into this, you know, they're mysterious, people don't know where they come from? Are you trying to sort of engender, you know, that, that yours might be like that, you know, that you don't know where they came from? Or are you quite happy for people to look at them to sort of think, yeah, they, they, they're probably people ones? Yeah, I'm very happy for that, you know. I'm, I guess like with Red Collie, with this serpent, by the fact that he's, um, you know, really denying that it was uh, human-made, you know, I'm, I'm quite chuffed with that. Uh, because it means it was a good circle. So when when uh, researchers or the word gets out that there's no way this could be man-made, then you know that's good. It's not true, but it's it's good in that respect. Uh, but if somebody actually asked me, I wouldn't lie about it. You know, I'll, t- I'll tell them the truth. Or maybe you know, due to the nature of the uh, the business, um, you can't really confess to doing certain designs to certain people because uh, it is illegal. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So uh, you have to exercise caution and things like that. But, mm. uh, Roger W. wants to know, how have you ever met him? How have I ever met him? Roger W. Have you I know? ever met Roger W.? Do you know who he is? Oh, I don't know. Has he ever met me? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know if he has, actually. I don't think so. No, no, possibly not. It doesn't... The name doesn't ring well. OK. Is that your real name, Roger? Yes, it is, it is his name. I'll I'll give you his full name just in case he doesn't want to give it out. You know, and he's shortened it for that reason. But yeah, oh, right, okay. yeah. It, but do you know me then, Roger? Do you? Um, I'll I'll tell you now. Hang on a second. Let's uh, let's go to uh, this for a second. Sound familiar, he says. No. So he hasn't met you, unfortunately. But there's still time if we don't all get m- huh? mullered by uh, comets <laughs> and things. Roger, uh, yeah, Roger Whittaker. Um, no, it's not Roger Whittaker. Um, so, anyway, uh, Dorothy's interpretation of what Jimmy Sparrow is saying is he, he reckons he's talking about 2012. So, you know, are you, have you incorporated 2012 into the, into the uh, design? So. I mean, you know, some people have interpreted the ser- the serpent, haven't they, as being something to do with something to do with 2012. Uh, so, was any of that your intention? No, not it? at all. Um, nope. Definitely not put in there. Again, it's uh, always open to um, people's interpretation. Uh, it certainly wasn't the intent. The message of what I said it was, you know, before quite simply that. Um, I personally, when I've seen, if you scroll down on there again, uh, you get to all the. Is it on that page? You get down to the whole. Um, no, you got it on ground shots there, haven't you? If you go to the comments page. Okay. We'll let you uh, pull that up then. Um, you know, on the on the comments page, it starts talking about all that astrological, astronomical, should I say, um, stuff that's going on. But no, I definitely uh, had no intention of putting that in there. Right. I'm gonna scroll down. Okay, are you uh, intending on making any circles? This is my question. Are you intending on making any circles uh, in this up and coming year? Then? He's miles away. Sorry, I guess, sorry. That's okay. Uh, are you intending on making any circles this year? I think somebody's already asked me that, haven't they? And, and my answer then was uh, so far, at the moment, no, I haven't made any plans. Right. Although a little particle of inspiration did enter my head earlier today, but that's all it was, it was an idea, uh, but as of yet, um, I haven't um, you know, made any designs or anything like that. Um, and I think it's going to be an interesting year this year because of all the um, all the discussions that have gone on between circle makers and, and research and stuff, so uh, we'll see what happens this year, whether there's going to be as many or more, some people are predicting more because it's mm. uh, you know, a prominent year, 2012, but then uh, other people are saying, well, you know, there might not be as many. So, um, again, like I said, I'm not in cahoots with every single circle maker that's out there. Uh, no circle maker is in cahoots with every single circle maker out there because there's so many of them. So, you know, who am I to say what people are planning to do? Somebody might have a hu- absolute humdinger uh, in, in store, uh, you know. I guess you're just going to have to watch the fields for that. Yes. Okay, well, we've got the graphic ready now. So uh, you were mentioning to us about this one. Yeah, I was just saying that they're talking about the 2012 thing, that again, somebody on here has um, 
made that look like it's some astrological significance. The Earth, the Sun, Venus, what's that, August the 16th, 2011? I've absolutely no idea what any of that represents whatsoever. Yeah. I've uh, got it makes sense to somebody, but uh, unfortunately... I've got, I've got a bit of a question on, on this. I mean, uh, it's all well and good for them to say that, you know, this this number 26 over here is important and it all goes, you know, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 20, da, 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 yeah. down to 3, 2, 1. And then what well, we got here, and then we got three then that don't seem to, for some <laughs> unknown reason, for some reason not known to humanity, you know, these three circles aren't included in the in the one, two, three, four, five, six, so it doesn't start at one there. What's it, 29, 30, 31, so, no... I'm sorry, this sort of stuff drives me mad because it's just <laughs> literally taking the crop circle exactly how you want it. And you say, well, I say that number one starts in this circle. You know, it's like, well, why do you say number one starts in this circle? Because it does. Because it bloody does, right? And then if you put it in that circle, then my, my theory works. And it's like, yeah, but it doesn't work if you don't put it in that circle, does it? And they go, yes, but it is, because I've got special knowledge, and the aliens told me. And it's like, oh, right, okay. Um, so, yeah, how do people manage to be that arrogant and get away with it and be loved and, and worshipped on, on crop circle forums? And, and circle makers who are giving you the, well, this is how we made it. And they're like, no, no, you bastard, you Satanist, you evil, horrible person. And it's like, you know, but, but somebody can come out with, you know, like, Add the square root of pi to a number called five, which I say meets this circle at number seven, and then add to it the word ET, and then 666. And then even though the number f that you get is 51585, I say that that equals Hello Dolly. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like... E-T-E-T, <laughs> bull or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bull, yeah. yeah. So we got a question from uh, Roger W., uh, he says, you you clearly are an ignoramus. Read Red Collie properly, man, and then learn before your next one, okay? Uh, yes, I think he's being sarcastic, Mr. Mr. W, because, uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Red Collie has, he hasn't written anything so far that I've been able to bloody decipher as uh, normal brainwave, you know, activity, but there we are. Well, the bugbear about the um, Red Collie's comments about the serpent thing is he's saying... He might come out with a lot of other things um, regarding the circle directly, but the point of uh, contention is that the footage of that circle is all done by bloody Photoshop, and it ain't. So, you know, not being an ignoramus, I think, uh, you know, it's all mirrors, man. It's all mirrors. You know, what people find really annoying about other people is what they actually find annoying about themselves. And there's Red Collie, uh, you know, attacking... Well, he's pretty much attacking your footage all the time, isn't he? And saying, I oh, know it's all fake, it's all lies and things. And yeah. It's actually the truth, and what he's doing is, um, you know, it's a reflection of the way he's actually being uh, about it all. Well, I thought really. it was a bit lazy as well, because he said sort of, he, he initially threw up, he said, it's Photoshop, you can clearly see it's not the same field. And it's like, well, I overlaid them. And I was like, well, actually, you know, it's not bloody far off. So what are you saying is not the same field? You know, it's like... And he said, oh, the trees aren't there. And he came back and retorted, the trees aren't there. And it's like, well, no, look, look, one, two, three. And he even got the lights, you know, and the lights are there. And it's like, you know, I don't think the guy had actually really looked at the footage properly when he made these statements, which is a bit upsetting because, you know, it's, again, it's armchair research of the, of the worst type, you know. It's kind of like, you know, oh, your aliens are not true because I just know they're not. And it's like, oh, right, okay, whatever. So, um... A question from Roger W. He says, uh, you haven't taken up my comment about Collie's objections to the lights, that they were clearly a setup. Oh, yes. Good point. So, um, put the footage on to you, Mr. Dillon, so I can uh, put, stretch my face. It's very hard, oh, I see. Right, thank you. I was wondering what you were saying. Put the footage on to me. Yeah, right, there you go. Um, yeah, the point being that uh, the, the footage was apparently um, filmed then. So, instead of being... F <laughs> okay, right. This guy, Red Collie, says that it was done in Photoshop, okay? So it's done in Photoshop, and you lied, and you lied, and it's not real, and it's Photoshopped. And then he turns around and says that it was actually a, a, a set of film lights were in the field. There were film lights in that field, and you can see these film lights, and they were behind the trees, and they were shining down and lighting up the area that this crop circle was in. Now, you don't need film lights because it's night vision equipment so therefore it sees in total darkness you don't need lights 
Uh, if you use lights, it will probably reduce the grain a little bit, but the whole point is that you're then going to actually saturate the field with light, which you're not going to be able to do in that area because that farmer was really upset about that formation and cut it out. So what type of film lights are we talking about? Invisible film lights? Infrared film lights? Now, I could understand infrared film lights, but you are talking about a long distance away and you're talking about film lights that I don't know any companies actually renting out industrial size film lights. They, 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 they will rent you out industrial film lights, but not industrial infrared film lights. So, bear in mind that, film, uh, that um, Red Collie said that initially this was CGI, and he then changed it around to being there were film lights in the field. And then we actually said, well, hang on a minute. No, those are not film lights. Those are film, th those are not film lights. I need to say they were film lights. Those are not film lights. Those are lights from a house in the distance. But because the image intensifier takes any spot of light and really, really boosts it up, it makes it look like it's a huge light. But then again, you know, I I've shown footage on Circle Makers TV and on YouTube where somebody smoking a cigarette is like turning on a torch. It's like whoosh and it's like massive amount of infrared light and it, it boosts up so um, yes I think that uh, Red Collie couldn't make his mind up on uh, which way to, to, to uh, attack this footage so there we are um, there we are, Darthy says he's worked on a lot of high budget movies over the years um, and he has talked to me about this, I remember him saying that he's worked uh, on uh, as a techie and an, uh, maybe an extra as well or something like that um, on lots of films so he's and he says he's never seen any infrared film lights being used in 10 years. Why would they? They're trying to film, you know, with cameras that see visible lights. So why would they want to use infrared lights? You know, they need to capture stuff. And, of course, if everybody can't see, they're going to be tripping over them bloody selves, aren't they? You're not going to have actors walking around falling over themselves. Uh, it would be a real insurance nightmare. So um, what are we looking at? Uh, he says... Jimmy Sparrow, if Red Collie bothers you, then why make crop circles? <laughs> or I, mean, I think he's putting pl uh, plural on that. So if Red Collies bother people you. People like Red Collie. Yeah, people like him. Yeah. Well, the answer to that is they don't bother me. <laughs> yeah. What they do is what is just completely their bag, man. You know, crack on. All I'm saying is uh, the reason that we've uh, done this serpent and revealed it as human made is purely to provide an avenue for people that want to go down that road of the human-made circles. You know, if you want to believe in the fantasy and you want to get into all of that, then please, you know, be my guest. Get into Red Collie and Michael Glickman and all those people and that. That's your bag, man. But, um, you know, if you want to explore the human-made things, then there's no avenue for you to do that at the moment, is there? So you have to have things like this Circle Makers TV and talking about this uh, crop circle, you know, and uh, certain books out there that are actually just giving you that knowledge if you want to pursue that knowledge. And at the moment, there's very few things uh, talking about the human side of uh, crop circle making. So uh, that's all we're doing, man. You know, if if Red Collie and all that want to carry on in their fantasy, then crack on, you know. Mm. They don't bother me. For the record, they don't bother me, and I'll make crop circles purely for other reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing to do with those people at all. Yeah. And Jimmy Sparrow was just asking, what road? Um, what road? The illusion road? Uh, well, yeah, the, the, the fantasy, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just think it's very easy for human beings to be manipulated by the powers that be um, because we're so ready, uh, ready to believe in fantasy. <laughs> you look at the TV all the time, it's just fantasy, fantasy, fantasy. Get away from the TV and movies and things like that. And you've got these other fantasies that people want to live in. There's fairies running around and there's all this, you know, otherworldly stuff that's really yeah. rubbish. <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying all otherworldly stuff is rubbish, but, you know, the stuff that Red Colin are uh, talking about to do with crop circles and Michael Glickman and Andy Thomas and all that, it's a, it's a fantasy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Honestly, stop worrying about things that are really important. These are patterns in the field. It's art, and you can quite clearly see their art. There's lots of... Um, Evidence out there to support that it's art, you know, speak to circle makers, watch this TV program and you'll see how circle makers make crop circles. And if at the end, after watching all the circle makers TV interviews, if at the end you still think that we're all, everybody that's been on this show is just a liar, then, you know, uh, somebody said to me very recently, actually, uh, a friend circle maker of mine said, there's absolutely no point in trying to convince people that don't want to be convinced. So, uh, 
yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> so right. I'm not trying to convince people. I'm just putting an avenue down there for people should they want to choose it. Simple as that. Right, okay. Well, we're very close to ending the show here because uh, I know you've got to get up for work tomorrow and uh, therefore we're going to let you go in a minute. So if there's anything really desperate that you haven't asked that you, you really, really must ask, if you ask it very quickly um, because we're going to wrap things up. So um, just to let people know who have been watching that uh, they can go to www.circlemakerstv.org and that's the website and uh, we will... Uh, hopefully be getting the Skype up and working for the next show so people can Skype in. It's been a little bit uh, long-winded getting some of this studio stuff in here and uh, getting around to doing it. Um, I've had my machine tied up for a week doing uh, doing some rendering for a, a favour for a friend who's doing a, a little film project at the moment. So my machine's been tied up sort of working through uh, doing stuff there. But... Um, so yes, I haven't had a lot of time to, to put in, but we are going to get the Skype back and working. So if you want to get your Skype cameras and everything up and running, uh, we will be able to do that at some time in the future. Um, yeah, so basically, if you've got any uh, questions, uh, get them in now. We're, we are literally going to wrap it up in a few seconds. So um, Jimmy Sparrow says, Ah, so you don't like fantasy, yet you're an artist. <laughs> no, there's a difference. <laughs> I don't like living in a fantasy, but I like drawing it. <laughs> you know, you can draw things. Yeah. But the, the difference is you just got to separate yourself from it, you know. I'm a foot in both worlds, for the love of God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like watching movies, but I don't I don't literally think yeah. that I'm living in the Matrix. But Yeah, yeah. I, I like Avatar. I know you didn't like it, but I like Avatar. I don't mean I want to live in there with loads of... Six foot blue people. Although, I don't know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> I, you liked Avatar, but what you always have to remember with a movie like that is that you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Fair you, ha you have no taste. <laughs> that's a whole different subject. And you need to sure. put some glasses on to see how shit that CGI was. <laughs> yeah. Um, there we are. So, Darthy is like to uh, say, he wants to say to you, he would like to say, your guest tonight was really interesting and a hearty thank you. Oh, very kind of you to say so, sir. Thank and you very he, much. Dalthy thinks Avatar was bad as well, so... <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's on my side. Me, 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 me. <laughs> okay, so, well, thanks for everybody's uh, great contributions tonight. Um, I'm hoping that this will help people understand a little bit more about uh, how circle making is, is done, why the serpent was done, obviously that I was given permission to be out there with a big team of circle makers that were trying to do you know, a big impressive formation, which was taken as being one of the best out there, as we've heard. It was it appeared on uh, the, the calendar for Francine Blake's crop circle group, and she will never admit that people make circles, and yet she had that on her calendar. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, and it has mistakes in it, doesn't it? We've seen... Well, not it, mistakes, wonky well, bits. It has it's wonky different. bits. It has, it has little bits that aren't... 100% you know curvy or how they're meant to be but you know if you look for them those things are actually there and you know and they said yep this is the best formation of the season and it's like wow great good good on you sir how do I do it good on you sir but it it just goes to prove doesn't it that uh, you know do these people really know what they're talking about at the end of the day and they're happy to take your money though <laughs> <laughs> Which you've never made anything out of, I, I take for making uh, no, circles, no? no, and probably don't want to either. No, which no. is good. So, uh, well, I don't know, a million pounds. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can buy him out in order to say he lied about <laughs> making all the crop circles. Yeah, and then you know make uh, make him happy and uh, and make Francine happy. I'm sure. So, okay, well, thanks, everybody. Um, everybody's saying thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, uh, Pixie Dread liked Avatar. He said it was cool, man. Hey. Yeah, he liked Respect. it. <laughs> and, and, and he might have something to do with uh, Hawkwind, even, I think, this guy. I'm not sure. Could be right, could be wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yes, he might be uh, might be a, sort of a follower of Hawkwind band. So, yes, you can see Hawkwind, lots of drugs, LSD, Avatar is good. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> Oh, it's a she. I'm told the Pixie Dead is a she. There we are then. Okay, well, um, good luck to everybody and thanks for popping in and blah, 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 blah. And we shall be back hopefully in a week or two weeks' time uh, with a new guest and uh, hopefully the Skype up and working. So watch on YouTube. We will upload this pretty soon and uh, catch you next week. Bye. Do you want to say goodbye? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.